I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Tima Derian. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> I said this. <laughs> some child, go beat him up. It's like some four-year-old. Security. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> All right, they'll see the video. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you can see what it's... she scares me. <laughs> It's not the best, but that's what the army general said. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. <laughs> nice. Very nice. <laughs> it's true. You actually reminded me of who I am. <laughs> My idea of fun and relaxing is watching Netflix. Maybe I'll go on YouTube and check out some stand-up comedians. If I'm really exerting pressure and going all out, then you know I go dancing urban kiz. My guest is far more active. She's into sports, extreme sports in my opinion. Things like skydiving, scuba diving, bungee jumping, and climbing mountains. While I might watch a mountaineer summit a mountain, She's the gal that's doing just that. My guest has a remarkable aura. She's fun, she's bubbly, she's raw. She's, she's true to the familiar phrase, what you see is what you get. Nonetheless, I doubt that we will hang out because I'm afraid she might end up taking me to a mountain. And we know that's not gonna happen. So for now, we remain conversational friends. My guest is of Lebanese origin, who was born in Kuwait and has spent the best part of the last two decades in the United Arab Emirates. While many coming out of university are seeking a role and perhaps wanting to go up the career ladder working at a multinational, my guest had a position as a finance person in a multinational, but decided to quit the pursuit of the career ladder because she wanted to pursue something she was passionate about. and that was climbing mountains. For those of you who are like myself, not mountaineers, here's a quick geography recap. There are seven continents. On each of them, there is a mountain top that forms the highest peak. My guest has summited six of the seven highest peaks in the world. In fact, she has summited the highest peak in the world, Mount Everest, at the tender age of 26. And of course, because that's not enough. She has so far climbed three of the seven highest active volcanoes in the world. You know, just for fun. I have a number of friends who are climbers. As a public speaking coach, I have helped a few craft and share their powerful stories on stage in different parts of the world. I'm not a mountain climber, but here's my understanding of climbing mountains. It's tough. It's a lot of work. It's challenging, it's demanding, it's exhausting on every level, physically, mentally, emotionally. The expedition I just mentioned where my guest climbed Mount Everest, that took her two months. I mean, just the thought of that makes me feel exhausted and in need of another espresso. Actually, can I grab one please? My guest has been featured on CNN, MTV, NBC, Sky News, Reuters, Al Jazeera, Al Arabiya, Khalid Times, Gulf News, The National, Virgin Radio, The New York Times, South Morning China Post. I'll stop. You get the idea. She's an advocate for youth and women's rights. She's an activist for environmental issues. And she's driven by her love for nature. My guest is also an entrepreneur, an aspiring motivational speaker, and also leads mentorship programs for youth and women. She might be a mountaineer who's pursuing and living her calling, but damn, she is far more than that. She's an inspiration to women and men, old or young, that there is no summit in your life, whatever it may be, that you can't conquer, as long as you're willing to do whatever it takes. She is the first Arab woman to summit Ojos de Salado, the highest active volcano in the world. She is the first Lebanese and youngest Arab to summit Mount Everest, 
the highest peak in the world. And now she's gunning for the Explorer's Grand Slam. That's when you complete the seven summits and then you ski to the furthest degree of the North and South Pole. That's something that less than 70 people have done in the entire world. She wants to give back to the world what the mountains have given to her. She is the mountain gypsy. This is How Do They Do It? I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Tima Derian. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. You make me feel like an underachiever. No, you shouldn't. And the reality is, my brother felt the same way. We thought we're like, yeah, we're onto it. We're five minute <laughs> conversation. No, we're not onto it at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's just achieving in different domains, I think. I think you make me feel like an ambition. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> You're doing amazing things, man. Well done. Thank you. You too. Thank you. I love the quote that, um, we, I think it's, it's your motto or your quote where you go, giving back to the world what the mountain gave, gave me. Back. Yeah, 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 correct. Tell me more about that. Like, what does so, it mean to you? I've, I've been climbing mountains for the past five years now. Yeah. And every mountain I'm on, every mountain I summit, it, there's something about it. There's some energy and it gives me something. It adds something to my personality. It shapes my values. It readjusts my beliefs. It does a lot of things. Whether it's a three-day mountain, whether it's a two-month expedition, something happens to me and I grow as a human and as a woman. And when I come back, you can feel my energy flowing. You can just feel it. It's, 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 it's divine, I think. Yeah. And then I literally do it. I give it back. I want to. I cannot. I cannot have it all to myself. I think it's too much to handle. So I just share it. Whether it's through um, taking people out hiking, motivational talks, doing small things that would contribute to the love of humanity, um, whatever it is, it can be big or small. I just give back. I just want to give it back. Get inspired. Whether you're in Dubai for business or pleasure. The last thing you want to do is blow your budget on accommodation, which is why I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. Beyond being price sensitive, what I love about Rove Hotels is the fact that they are a combination of cafe, culture, and just coolness. Even my guests, many of them, when they arrive before we record or after we finish recording the podcast, they actually comment. They go, wow, this place is cool. The vibe is amazing. And it is amazing. So, if you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. This episode is brought to you by M Dojo. Whether you're in business or new to business, you need three things. A good website, traffic, and being able to convert that traffic into paying customers. That's what M Dojo does best. They're able to create for you a functional state-of-the-art website, drive targeted traffic, and put in all the elements needed in order to convert that into paying customers. Isn't that what you want? Of course it is. Give the team at MDojo a call and see how they can help you increase your sales and profits. Tell them I sent you. Their website, mdojo.co. Did you know that you know, we all go through periods of feeling lost or we're frustrated or dark times. Mm -hmm. Like what was the, like, how did you realize like today you're in a fortunate position? Yeah. Like there might be people who are watching this or they're listening to this and they go, well, that's nice. She, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. Or we see great individuals who know what they're doing. They're doing great things and we admire them and we think that they're lucky because they've kind of just figured it out mm -hmm. or they knew what to do. Was it always the case for you or, or was there a journey of figuring out? Um, I always knew there is something. So I always knew I'm here for a reason. S things happen through me. I'm a channel with the universe and I believe I'm here not for things to happen to me. Things happen through me. And I think through mountaineering, things are happening through me and I'm reaching. I'm trying. I'm still trying to figure out what my purpose is. But like, yeah, I w I've been always into sports. Uh, As a child. Yeah. So... Um, 
I was into basketball and then I went to the volleyball team and then I went to swimming team and I was jumping in and out and like my family would say, okay, Hala, she'll try a little bit and then she'll change. She'll try a little she's, she's not going to They were to hoping. It. Yeah, they're like, she'll never like stick to one thing. Let's her try, let's her try. And then when I was at uni, I got my uh, scuba diving license and I'm like, okay, under the water. And I, I, I went to the advanced level and I wanted to take it to the next level. But then I did not feel like I'm in my element. I always wanted this adrenaline. And then I went to the skydiving and... Um, so and, sorry, and before skydiving, scuba diving, how far down did you go? I mean, what's advanced? From 40 meters. Damn. Yeah. And then skydiving, I got my AF1 license and I was doing okay. But then I had a minor accident and I'm like, okay, I don't think this is how I oh, want to like... <laughs> no. When you put skydiving and accident in the same sentence? No, no, it's, it's a minor one. No, seriously, because it was... Because I'm somebody... Shoot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I forgot to open my parachute. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord. No, I mean, it was, it was really minor, but I opened my parachute and I was above the highway in the desert uh, campus. And I, I, I was panicking because I had only a thousand feet to come back down. And I'm looking at them and I can see the cars and I can see the desert and I could not tell like whether I'm going to make it or not. So I, I said, I, this is... Yeah, <laughs> and I had a malfunction that I had to fix. So anyway, I, I said, this is not, I'm not in my element. Why am I doing this? Like, what am I trying to prove? What am I trying to figure? And then um, I went through this phase of, um, I wasn't doing much anymore. Yeah. And I was, uh, I went to the States and I did my exchange program. I was focused more on my studies. Uh, and then there was some drama in between. And I'm like, okay, now I, like I need to figure out what do I want. I was I, I got my job and I started working. And but if I can just go back to that childhood, or what? Like how old were you when you were going? I'm here for a purpose, but I don't know what I want to do. Like, no, I was I was, I was about like 15, 16. Okay. Yeah. So at that age, you had that awareness of going. I'm here for something. Yeah. But I, I don't yeah. know it. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm active. So I'm gonna go and try out all I've these been different always things. Active, yeah. Okay. I never I never stopped. Even if I was bad or I wasn't enjoying the whatever sport it is, I would still continue. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to like see where. Okay, I had the thing. I love pushing my limits, and I'm extremely stubborn with these things. So if it doesn't work, I keep on trying and trying and trying until I I figure it out, and then I leave it. It's done. Yeah. But like I did that with so many sports, but then when it came to mountaineering, it was something else. It was love at the first sight. Yeah. <laughs> but and here's the thing. What's interesting is I think a lot of people they fail to realize that I've had this because like yourself, you know, you're a speaker as well. I've been on stage in different parts of the world and then people come up to me and go, but I'm lost. I don't know what I want to do. Mm. I'm like, how many things have you tried? Yeah. What have you tried recently? Oh, you know, I'm sitting and waiting, trying to figure it out. Sitting and waiting, trying to figure it out is not the answer. Yeah, you need You've to tried that. so many things, yeah. did it, took it all the way maybe. Yeah. And you go, not this. I'm not, what am I proving with this? Not here, not here. And then you got to mountain climbing, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think this is critical. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So my, my, minor. My <laughs> minor skydiving. <laughs> so after that, um, I was uh, with uh, with the company, and we were preparing the event for SKO, and they got a motivational speaker, and he started talking about Everest. So going back in time, um, I used to travel with my family, and we went to uh, Nepal about I, I went to Nepal about five times. Okay. Uh, it's a nice place. Right? Yeah, I love Nepal. So like my when dad was the first time. I was about fourteen. Okay. So this is when we flew up above Everest, and I still have the certificate of date saying I did not climb Everest. I flew above it. So when we flew above it, and we were like sightseeing and all those uh, tourist stuff, I told my family, I'm like, one day I'm gonna come and climb this mountain. It looks so cool. I did not know what Everest was. I did not know how long it takes. I thought it was just a thing, and it looked really cool from the airplane. So I'm like, I'm gonna come and like stand down there. And At 14 in passing. Yeah. yeah. And like, it was a joke and everybody got over it. And then 10 years later, I'm in the car in 311, going back home from work. I was extremely exhausted. I was frustrated and I did not like what I'm doing, but I had to do it. Cause like, you know, That's after life. graduation and the job and the career path and you need to do this and you need to do that. I call my dad and I'm like, um, guess what? He's like, well, I'm like, I'm going to climb Everest. He's like, what are you talking about? And he was in a pod. I said, I'm going to climb Everest. Can you just get me some papers and all details what to do and where to take it? And just a random thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Driving then... down the 311. <laughs> 
Why? Uh, and he's like, okay, you're crazy. I'll just get you some stuff. And he did ask people there and all that. And he got me the information. Support a father. Very. Yeah. Kudos to dad. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, Uh, so like I saw the motivational speaker talking and I said like I said I want to go to Everest so I went up to him I'm like listen I want to climb Everest yeah he's like but it's not like that he's like do you know how many people come up to me and say I want to climb Everest yeah. I'm like yeah but I'm different when I say something it means I will do it and he looked at me he's like okay this is my Skype let's have a call I said okay so we had a half an hour uh, Skype call and he told me all about mountaineering and he told me it takes about two months to climb Everest and he started explaining the conditions I'm like, what am I saying? Can I do this? I Googled it all and like watched everything. I'm like, you know what? There's nothing impossible. If I want to do it, I will do it. No doubt, no fear. Nothing. Has nothing. this been part of your personality? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's how I, I enjoy jumping into the unknown. Interesting. Yeah. And then she scares me. <laughs> <laughs> so he told me, look, we're going to Elbrus. So Elbrus is the highest mountain. In Europe, That's right. it's in Russia, mm. and it's about 5,642 meters. I did not know what is altitude. I did not know about the gear. I didn't know anything. They sent me a pack that says all the gear that I need. So I called him like, this is so expensive. And he's like, don't buy it. You can rent some of it and buy some of it. I said, and you okay. don't need experience? You don't need to go and get trained? You just need to be fit. Okay. You have to be fit for that mountain. And he believed that I can do it. I said, okay, fine, I'll try it. And you clearly had I no, ha- no, no other beliefs of doubt or oh, fear. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, we're just gonna go climb the mountain. How bad is it gonna be? Like, worst case scenario, I just turn back. But Now, I know I won't. 5,600 meters, can you give context? Because it's easy to just say 5,600 meters, but can you help me with yeah, so five, visualization five, yeah. of how mm, yeah. high is 5,600 meters? Um, so it would be about, how can you? Because, like, for example, a football field. Because of Dubai, I want to like calculate it based on Burj okay, Khalifa. But, but, like, yeah, so like Burj Khalifa, how high is Burj Khalifa? 828 meters. Okay, divide by 5642, how well, much Approximations <laughs> like 10 is 8, so 8 times 6, 7. 7 <laughs> Burj Khalifas. Yeah. 7 Burj Khalifas. My Burj Khalifa person. is to date the tallest tower in the world. Correct. Get inspired. One of the questions that I get frequently asked is, Kev, how can I increase my motivation? We see great individuals, we see achievers, like many of the guests that I'm bringing on the show. They have the energy, they do so much, they're in a state of flow. How do they do it? Well, my team and I have released an article which I've made available on kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog, the ultimate biohacking guide to increasing motivation. Or you can simply Google Kevin, increase motivation, and the article should pop up right at the top. It's absolutely free. Read it, and most important of all, take the bits and pieces that are relevant to you and apply it into your life to increase your motivation. I hope you find the article of value. If you do, feel free to leave your comments and also share it with your circle of friends. Again, you can Google it. Kevin, increase motivation. It will be the first link that pops up. Or on my website, kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog and your first mountain no preparation no, yeah you just need to be fit i'm gonna go try yeah. it out yeah seven yeah apparently. it's climbing With seven snow, so like we had Khalifa's. exactly wow. and like the, the gear was weird for me so we had plastic boots i've never heard of plastic boots and then crampons i don't know what crampons is i live in the desert i've never seen what a crampon is and an ice axe and like the, the harness i've never tried these things but i went online and i was googling every word and the, the okay ice axe meaning and then i'm like what is this used for is it like Oh, anyway, and then crampons. So I figured it all out. I got what I have to get, and then I rented whatever I wanted to rent, and I went like with the cheapest stuff because I thought, what if it's like every other sport? I go, I invest in it, and then after I finish it, I'm like, I'm done. I don't want to do this again. So I didn't buy anything. Fair enough. Uh, so first mountain, we were about 23 people in that group. Uh, it was a lot. Mm. And I made it the first, and I was I was not sick at all, and I would see everybody collapsing, and I'm like, I don't understand what's going on with them. Why do they collapse? Because they're not fit, or is it the Because altitude? Because the altitude. Some people can bear the altitude. Altitude sickness is something you cannot avoid. It, hap- it happened like twice to me, and it was really bad. But it's how you deal with it, and it's how 
it's the self discovery. Sure. Um, so I was fine on the first mountain, and my family was really like worried. I, I was like away for seven days, but after I summited and I came back down, this is where my life like I'm like okay, I think I can do this forever. Like this, and I was coming out of um, a really bad situation before I went there. And then the mountain took everything away from me, like the, the bad energy, the heaviness, the heaviness. And then I came back and I felt I have something different. There is something different about me. And if you speak to my mom, she will tell you every time my daughter goes to the mountain and come back, there is something different about her. Interesting. And it's, it's for the better. Um, so yeah, this is how my journey started. And then I went to Aconcagua and the climbing started and never stopped. That's amazing. And I didn't summit Aconcagua. I was overconfident. Interesting. Tell me about that because <laughs> yeah. this is a challenge we face and it's something I've brought up on many occasions yeah. where I've shared with, with my audience and I've said that in the past when, in the domain of public speaking coaching, especially in the Middle East because of the culture that we live in and so forth, it's very different from Europe or the States where you can get honest feedback. We've gone from a time and place where people lacked confidence yeah. to now one of the problems being overconfidence. Oh, yeah. Anyone feels that they have the confidence that they can yap on stage, th that makes them a great speaker. Not at all. Like you're just blurring noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an art to communicating with impact. Mm. And the challenge is realizing that you need to just calm down on your confidence and develop the skill Yeah. if you want to be great at communicating. You so see, I'm, that's beautiful. <laughs> thank you. So I'm, I'm keen on what you said here. Take us through that journey of Tima as an overconfident person trying yeah. to tackle this mountain. Aconcagua is one of the mountains that I think I speak about more than Everest or any other mountain because this is what taught me about, it taught me a, a lot of things about myself. So I went to the mountain. So after my first mountain, I said, oh, Aconcagua is next. When is it? December? And it was still July. Ah, oh, I can do Aconcagua. I did so well on the mountain. I'm like, like, I'm so good at this. And then people thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people were like, Tima, calm down. Aconcagua is really high. I'm like, how bad is it going to be? It's 6,962 meters. That's about 7,000 meters. And it's like next to the equator. So the pressure there is extremely different. The altitude feels completely different. And it's really dry in South America. I said, no, I know I can do it. The first one was an icy mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So completely so, yeah, different. That, it, it, there was still ice and snow on the mm. mountain, but it's dry. Like the, the conditions are okay. dry and the air is dry. Everything. It's, it's, it's different. So I, I'm like, no, I am going. I will go. So I like I told my family, okay, so I'm going my, to my next mountain. I told my dad, he's like, where? I'm like, Argentina. He's like, well, what? Like, no, you just came back from Russia. I thought I'm I like, had a princess. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, no, you're not going. And like, you can let them, you know, you can let them, you just know. I'm like, why not? He's like, because I said, no. I said, no, I am going. And that's freaking turn out of that. He's like, no, you're not going. I'm like, I am going. And then he's like, no. I said, okay. So I went back to the office and I told them, I want to go to Aconcagua. Can you give me extra days? I don't know what. And they were happy with that climbing step. So they did, they, con they, they approved my vacation. So I, I went back to him and said, look, the office approved my vacation. I can go. Like, I'm, I'm working. I can go. If they gave me, like, the yes, I will go. He said, no, don't go. Everything in the world was saying not to go. But I still wanted to go. So I made this whole email and presentation of why I want to go to Aconcagua. And, like, I used all sorts of tools I can use To sell with your him. dad. Yes. Why I want to go to Aconcagua. And then he's like, at the end, he's like, you know what? He sent me an email. He said, okay, fine. You can go now. I said, okay, you're done. That's Boom. funny. She did yeah. a presentation to her own dad. Yeah, <laughs> to come from Aconcagua. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I get there. Everything is good. Uh, I, I, I trained. I was ready. We start climbing. So I had a guide who was in a rush because he had another expedition after us. So we did not acclimatize properly. And we were stuck in the tent for about five days because of a really bad snowstorm. So we had to rush. So we went from camp one, camp two, camp three. And then there's no acclimatization. This right here is an example of a bad guide. Yeah. Is that true? One of yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Part of it. It's yeah. not fully a bad guy. I was, I was, I was gone. Yeah, I couldn't. No, I couldn't. But, but the fact that as a professional, if they're trying to rush it. Oh and, yeah, because and, yeah, because so I went from the 31st of December. I was supposed to summit, but he he had to come back down on the 2nd of this, uh, January. 
So it, it yeah, he, you don't, no, you, don't, you, don't you can't put deadlines with nature. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And he's like, okay, guys, we don't have time. We have you can do it. You can do it. And we all we were free in the gym. None of us summited. So we're like, yeah, we can do it. We can do it. And then I started throwing up by at six thousand meters. I have a video. I, I was I made a video for my family saying I think I I messed up. I'm so sorry. I I can't do it anymore. But I'm gonna push. And summit night was the next day. And I knew I'm not going to make it. I knew I will not make it to the summit. But I said, I will not sit in the tent and say I did not try. So you, this is where you, six you, you went to 6,000. So there's yeah. 900 left. Yeah. And summit night, for, you know, in case you know, there will be people who are watching or yeah. listening and they're not mountaineers. Yeah. That's that last push pretty the much. The last right? push. Yeah. So it's usually 900 to 1,000 meters. Uh, so we start at like 3 a.m. in the morning. Mm. So... Uh, I woke up. And it's anything. a very short window mm. of having to go we and need come to back. Be up there before twelve at least one twelve and come back down because lenticulars can happen on the summit after twelve and the snow changes and the storm starts. So you really need to be down. Uh, so I woke up three a.m. in the morning. I was extremely exhausted. My face is yellow. There is nothing in my system. No water. No food. Because I cannot put anything in my system that doesn't come out. I, I did not feel it, but I said, I, I will wake up and dress and come out. It was really cold. It was like minus 15. And then I'm wearing on all my gear and everything. I came out of the tent. I'm barely walking, but I said, I'm going to push. And then I reached to 6,400 meters. And I said, God, if I'm going to die, please show me a sign to stop and come back down. Because I promised my mom to never hurt myself in these things. And then it continue step and step and stop, step and step and stop. And then I'm like sneezing. And then I feel there is like a hole in my mouth. And I'm looking, I'm like, like my tooth is gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so from the, no, from the pressure, it was a crown. It's a crown tooth. From the pressure, it's like scuba diving. When you come back down and then it pops out from the pressure, it's the same thing up there. So it came out and I'm just like, okay, thank you. I'm going to go back down. <laughs> and just listening to her, I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned back at 6,400 meters. But all that, with the bad guide, with the sign, with my tooth and everything, I was not supposed to go there. I was supposed to listen to everything, all the messages from the universe. My father said no. Everything was saying no. But I still wanted to go, which is fine. But if I didn't go, I wouldn't have learned that it's okay to turn back. When I turned back, everybody was like, are you okay? Because I had, what, 400 meters, less than 400 meters to make it to the summit. Yeah, imagine going 90% of the way. Yeah. Literally at 10% to go. Yeah, we're talking like from Dubai to Argentina. That's the other side of the world. And then I've been training for six months. And then I spent so much on this. Everything I make made from work, I put it into this trip. And then I'm, I'm ready. Everything is okay. Okay, off to go. And less than 400 meters, you have to turn back down and this is where the ego game starts playing because you start thinking like no but i did all this i'm sure i can push a little bit more i'm sure i can push a little and this is what i was doing but then i'm like and this is how most of the climbers die i it's just a little bit more mind over mind, just a little bit more but then this is when the ego starts taking over because that's a, like there is a lot happening and like when you reach to the summit as humans, we think we have achieved, and this was what scares me the most every time I reach the summit. I, when I come back down, I'm just quiet. I'm talking to myself like, it's just another mountain. You did not do this huge achievement. It's an achievement for yourself, and maybe you can use it to like do something for humanity. Do not think that you are, just because you stood on the top of a specific mountain does not mean my ego needs to inflate. Mm. And it's hard to control. Yes. And when you come down, everybody sees you as the hero. I'm but on you top of the world, yeah, literally. Literally. Yeah, literally. But you still need to smash yourself a little bit. You need to stay humble. Because if you allow the ego to inflate, you're done. Mm. It becomes bad. So yeah, I turn back. And this is the um, excessive confidence I had. And I no longer have it. Now when I go on other mountains, I haven't had the situation where I had to turn back. But I know if I have to turn back, I will turn back. I'm okay with it. It's completely fine. I, the mountain's gonna always be there. Mm. I would, I, if I want, I, I went back. I Concagua. It took me a year to go back, but I came back. What did you do differently? So I trained harder. Um, I I read more about the mountain. Um, I was just. I knew. I, I I knew deep inside me that I will do it this time. Mm -hmm. I'll do whatever it takes to do it. And I did not go with the guide. 
uh, I made a group of friends who are also climbers, and we decided to do our own acclimatization without anyone rushing us. And we were carrying everything, our food, everything. Uh, so I said, if I summit this mountain, because I, it's like, and like when I reached to the point where I turned back, I don't know how, it's scary. Uh, if I summit it, I'm going to go summit the highest active volcano, which is the second highest mountain in uh, South America. I want to do both. Like, of course. Just to take something back. Yeah, yeah. It's like me saying I want to do season two of a, yeah. of a TV series. It's like I want to do both mountains. Yeah. So um, I summited. A year later, I went. We did this group. It was perfect. We summited. I came back down. I went back to the city, washed my clothes, took everything to the laundry, took a plane from Argentina to Chile, and then went to Chile from Chile, rented a car, drove four hours, and like I was burnt. I have a video, I'm all burnt because it was really dry that season. Yeah. And uh, found where the place is, and it was so random, and we said, okay, we don't have to summit Ojos del Salado, but we can give it a shot. So Ojos del Salado is the highest active volcano in the world, and it's at 6,869 meters. Yes. And we started, and one thing led to another, and we summited. And I came back down, I'm like, boom. <laughs> now I can I'm go back this. home, and I feel so good about myself. I'm done. Like, I'm happy. I managed to do $6,000 in a month, in less than a month. And, like, whatever happened last year is gone. It's okay. Because it took something away from me. Sure. Instead of, like, 400 meters. So, yeah. That was uh, my Argentina story. Man, I'm just to, just what you're saying and what I understand of mountain climbing, because it's not going to be in my life journey mm. by choice. <laughs> it, it requires mental, physical, and emotional development. Mm. How did you develop each one? So physical, by yeah. training and climbing mountains. And so what kind of training did you do? I work a lot on endurance and strength training. Okay. Uh, stamina, of course, but like my number one thing to like keep it going is endurance. Um, so that's for physical. I'm always training, but to train for a mountain, you have to climb other mountains. Okay. You have to be on another mountain. It's like you'd hit out Russell Khaimah? Yeah, I'm always Jebel, there, exactly. Is it Jebel, Jebel Jace? Jace, yeah. yeah. So I'm always climbing. Every weekend, I'm doing something on Russell Khaimah. Now I'm guiding, but like, I'm still like active. My, my, my body is used to the ascent and like walking on different terrain, whether it's hiking, whether it's trekking, whether it's climbing, you need to keep your body aware of it can do stuff on different terrains than straight. Sure. Um, and also for the physical training, climbing mountains, you're talking about like sleeping in a tent and not showering, eating specific food in, in a specific environment. Like not... And you're doing all this by choice? Of course. Interesting. Of, and I would do it again. Because I mentioned to you that, um, clearly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was mentioning to you that, you know, I've worked with quite a few mountain climbers and mm. every time I'm helping them with their stories, I'm like, you're doing this by choice? Actually by choice? Because I had the feeling that at some stage, um, especially in Dubai, because the scene is amazing, um, jumping off the plane and getting to see the Palm Jumeirah mm. was amazing. Yeah. And at one point, I started seeing everyone's social profile having that picture. And I thought everyone's just doing it for the trend. They might be scared and this is not even a challenge they mm. want to conquer, but they're doing it just for the gram. Um, then I noticed that a lot of people, like, it was just everyone was mountain climbing. I'm like, is this something you actually want to do? Or are you just doing yeah. it so you can take a picture and tell your friends, I've climbed a mountain? Yeah, yeah. Look, like mountain climbing, whatever. as long as you're in the outdoors and the nature, it's good. I'm happy everybody is trending. Like if it's trending, amazing, because the nature will teach you a lot of things. Okay. Whether it's a small mountain or a big mountain or a trek just next door. If you're outside rather than sitting next to your iPad or a TV, good. Let it trend then. Mm. But don't come and like start calling yourself a mountain climber when other, someone else has put all the like effort time and like energy into this because of passion and you come and say oh like i climbed that hill and now i'm a mountain climber definitely not there's a fine line between mountain climbing and being an outdoor enthusiast mm -hmm. um so yeah it's good it's good that it's trending i'm happy it's you learn so much and it's good for our souls sure yeah we're not made to be sitting in between walls Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please, next time let's yeah. do this interview on in the nature. another area. <laughs> Can we? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a nice grip. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're not, like, 
genetically we're not designed to be in this sort of No, spirit. yeah. We're, we're like animals. We are. Yeah. I like it on the inside. It's, it's nice. Safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what about emotionally? How do you, like, how did you develop your emo emotional ability? So emotionally, it's the tough one, actually. Um, at the beginning... Like how, perhaps you could share with us, yeah, how were you challenged and then what you did yeah. to, to develop it? So, um, so growing up as a teen, um, like, okay, it wasn't easy with my family. I'm the eldest, but I had to go with them through all the phases of life. They, they, I, they weren't like rich. And, uh, we had to go through a lot of phases mm. and I saw how much they struggled. And like my mom was emotionally strong and my father was also emotionally strong. So I had those two emotionally strong human beings. And like when something happens to me, I have a mother who would say, okay, get over it. I, I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. Okay. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be okay. <laughs> and she can Thanks, handle mom. it. <laughs> yeah. um, and besides that, I am like, I think it's in, 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 it's in my instinct. I'm just, if I want something, I will do it. I don't care what it takes. Mm -hmm. I don't care how bad it can be. I don't care about what anyone thinks about it. If yeah. I really want it, I will do it. Yes. So I these know, were I, already I, I, there. I share that stubbornness with you. Yeah. But we, st I can from my personal journeys, there were many days that were very defeating and tough. Yeah. 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 So I'd be keen to know, did you have those? Of course. Despite the stubbornness of, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. Oh, I've had days where I said, oh, I, said I can't do this anymore. It's too much. And like people are annoying me now with the, with all this mountain climbing and there's challenges between because the Middle East has a very small community of climbers so like like everybody would start like uh, like talking about this and I'm just like no like this is unfair and this is I don't but then there's only me it's in my hand who's complaining if you block all the noises and just focus on my goal and this is this is the only reason I was able to achieve all of this oh look at her where did she come from now she suddenly wants to climb oh look at her like how old is she she's just 27 she thinks she's gonna do Everest and guess what I've been doing it because I've been focused and I know exactly what I want and I know exactly the path that I want to take and where I want to reach when it comes to mountain climbing. And so emotionally, what did you do to develop? Um, on the mountain, yeah. I would suck it up. If I'm tired. So self-talk? Yes. Yeah. Like, what would you tell yourself? Are you, are you okay? It's not that bad. So whatever, you're not bleeding. I'm just so a dead person. It's okay. I just keep going. No, I actually, yeah, when I saw, yeah, when, when I saw, like, I had to clip to that dead person and continue, I was trying. So, okay, I believe a lot in mind over matter. Okay. I, uh, you have to, I yeah. think, doing it's what you're all, doing, to me, you have to. It's all about mind over matter. The body does not give up so early. The mind is what gives up so early. Yeah. And when you train your mind that this is not you who's giving up, it's my body is fine, I'm still strong. And when you truly believe that you have a strong body that's made to do this, your genes will change. Your cells will become adjusted to your thought. Yeah. And this is it. And if you true, you really need to believe in that. And I believe so much in my body. The power that my body has as a woman is, is insane. Mm. When I'm on the mountain in Alaska, I had to carry 30 kgs on my backpack and 30 kgs on my sled for about 18 days. Wow. First day, I'm like, damn, I cannot do this. Like, this is too heavy. And I'm walking 30 on, on your back? Yeah. 30 on a sled. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just like, the, 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 what's this? Okay, I did Sounds like our family it. traveling <laughs> with mom and her, and her suitcases. <laughs> and you know, I'm like, why am I doing this? So first day I thought about giving up, but I'm like, hang on, what's going on? Like, I know I'm going to get to the top. Like, I need to suck it up. It's not that heavy. I can see other people holding it. Why would it, wouldn't I hold it? Like, what's wrong with me? So emotionally speaking, yes. you set your capabilities on how much emotionally intelligent you need to be. And I use the mind over matter. It yeah. works for me everywhere. Sometimes I feel it's not working, but I still keep on pushing because I'm like, I know it will work. Just give it some time. So patience and mind over matter, patience. Have, do you have people that you look up to? You know, people who you think, oh, this person is remarkable. This is what they do. I'm modeling them. So there's, ever... in, the, in the climbing community, so there's this uh, North Face athlete called Hilary Nelson. Okay. And this woman has her life set between family, climbing, skiing, outdoors, and like the influencer. And I think she's perfection. So yeah, people like that. If she can do it, of course I can do it. Nice. So there was physical? Emotional, emotional and mental. And mental. The mental game. So 80% of mountain climbing, in my opinion, is a mental game. You mm. can be 
you can be the most physically fit person on earth. Yes. But if you fail mentally, you're not going to make it. So I did have people with me on Everest who had to turn because of emotions and mental. They could not take it. They missed their family. And some people were like, this is this is not okay. What am I doing with my life? Yeah. You have to pass sometimes through Kumbu ice fall. It's where the ice falls if you are a second late or a minute behind or you never know what would collapse on your hand. Right. It's all like icy like place and like we're passing through it at 12 a.m. in the morning and you hear a big avalanche and then you have to stop and wait and there is as if you're in a war literally you are in a war at 12 a.m. in the morning waiting for the sunrise it's freezing mm. and there is a lot of mental game because your mind starts telling you like you're tired you're sleepy what, what are you doing at 12 a.m. in the morning yeah you haven't had a shower for the last 15, 15 days, days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, but like for me, I, so one of the things about me is I'm always laughing on the mountain, right. whether I'm tired, whether I'm crying, it's not nitric oxide, whether I'm, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> it's, you just find, if I'm really tired, I would start laughing so much with tears because I'm crying, I'm not laughing, but I, and I have a video and, and they're like, how do you feel? I'm like, <laughs> Because I'm like, this is too much. Like I've been climbing for 13 hours. Yeah. I'm like, like I'm done. What mind over matter? It's not working anymore. I just want to get to sleep. But then when I complete the thing from A to Z, it's the most rewarding thing ever. You feel like, damn, I'm good. This mm. was good. I want to do it again. Okay, I know I had to go through those lows and like I had to deal with it, but I think I dealt with it fine. I, I, I'm still happy, like I'm tired, but I'm happy. Yeah. And, like if you enjoy what you're doing, yes. it's, I call it the sweet suffer because you're enjoying the suffering, which is weird. Yes. And like when you, so you're walking, it's so dark and then you cannot see anything and suddenly the sun comes up and sunrise is the most beautiful thing on the mountain. The colors of the skies change. It, it, your face is so pure. Everyone's face around you is so pure, if you can see it, because we're usually fully covered. Yes. And, and like your eyes, everyone's eyes is sparkling from the snow and, and the colors. And you're just there and you're so blessed. How many people get to see this at like 7,000 meters? Like, the, it's, nature is beyond beautiful. And this is where those moments hit me. Like something has added on to, to my body, to mm. me as self-growth. Um, it's, it's, it's too beautiful. So like we were talking about the mental games. You see, I always no, no, get driven fantastic. away That's with fantastic. the views and what I see out yeah. there. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like it takes a lot. <laughs> to what, what you said was interesting, that sweet suffering. Yeah. It's interesting and it's important for you as an individual to really figure out what it is for you. Yeah. Right? Because you also did bungee jumping. Did you do it in Nepal? Uh, I did. I did a lot of bungee jump. Once I had to travel for two days to Macau and come back to do the highest bungee jump there. <laughs> yeah, I was into that, but I wouldn't do that anymore. I know. Where's reason. Kevin? He's at a cafe. <laughs> <laughs> hey? Did you do that in Nepal? Nepal. The one did in I Nepal do it in Nepal? Beautiful. Oh, yeah. So I was with an ex. And uh, we traveled to Nepal. Yeah. She's like, oh, let's go away. It's going to be the long weekend. We're like, cool. Let's go for a long weekend. So, yeah, we did a four-day trip to Nepal. Nice. And the intention was this four-day trip came with the package for bungee jumping. Mm. So it was somewhere close to the Tibetan border. Yeah, Do you know about yeah, it? Yeah, I think yeah. it's called the it's last. the last resort. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when we arrived and we had the suitcase, you had to get to the resort. There was this rickety bridge. Yeah. I'm like, oh, hell no. Halfway on the bridge, I realized this is where they're going to do the bungee jumping. I'm like, oh, hell no. <laughs> so the next it? day, the next day, that's the bungee jump. Oh. So I'm like, hey, you know what, ex-girlfriend, why didn't you go first? <laughs> I want to take good pictures. She wanted to take pictures. They do take pictures. There's GoPros everywhere. This is back Look in the day. Home. This is back in the day. <laughs> oh, okay. This is the back in the day. Back in the day. She had an SLR camera and she wanted good pictures because she was super excited about it. And I was excited for her. So <laughs> I took the camera and I was like, okay, do your thing. I'm going to keep taking pictures. And then they take her through the process. She jumps, taking pictures. I wait for her to come back up. She goes, did you see my form? It was amazing. I was like, you looked amazing. It was fantastic. It was great. I was like, you know what? This isn't a fight or this isn't something that I, it's not a fight I want to battle or conquer. This is not a fear I want to conquer. Yeah. I'm fearful, but it's not what I'm going to conquer. Okay. You're going to tell the world about your bungee jump? 
for me, if I was to do it, which I'm not, but if I was to do it, no one's going to know about it because it means nothing for me. Okay. All I can see is the fear. There is no that, what was that, the sweet suffering? sweet suffering? There is no sweet suffering. It's just suffering from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know what? You looked so good. I took great <laughs> pictures. Why didn't you do it a second time? I have no shame. It's public information. But um, I let her jump a second time. Oh, wow. Because I'm just, the, I'm a romantic. Yeah. Super. Yeah. No, like that, that, that's the best boyfriend. She like, jumped twice. <laughs> I let her jump twice. Listen, if you didn't fail the first time, here's your second opportunity to fail. Good luck. <laughs> Hell no. I'm not going to do a budget jump. Uh, it's really important though. You got to figure out what's, like you try it out. Like the people, because you said, and I've seen and I've heard of this. Fit people go up the mountain, halfway through, 90% up there, they turn back. Yeah. Whatever the reason, whether you've got frostbites, mm. something is failing, people go blind. Yeah. Uh, whatever the reasons are, you just, you didn't acclimatize and yeah. so, you know, you're not breathing. Or just the fact you realize, hey, no, I, I don't, don't want to die. Yeah, this is not my game. It. And it's okay. It's completely Absolutely fine. nothing wrong this with is, it. Yeah. yeah. And it's just knowing for you, it's your calling. Okay, if I fail the first time, I'm going to prepare again yeah. and try it a year later. Yeah. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to feel great about it. Yeah. 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 I like my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I like my mountains. <laughs> um, it's also easy because we come from this part of the world. Mm. There is an association and assumption with wealth yeah. and that it's just been handed to her. Mm -hmm. Has this, has your ride just been handed to you? Daddy's princess. Very nice. Did he it's fund a, it a very for nice you? Question. So, okay, no. I mean, but, I just respect okay. that. I don't want you coming after me. <laughs> no. I just mean it because this is the reality, right? No, no, 100%. Because I have friends who are also men, yeah. but in the Western world, they have that assumption because they're Khaliji, yeah. that they've been funded. Of course. And many don't realize that they've worked for it. Yeah, yeah. So I've been working ever So the day I graduated was the day I started my job. So I've been working, 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 but the difference between me and my, whatever, my university friends, other colleagues, everyone around me, my age, was that what I made was being spent on mountains all the time. Mm. I did not have the life. I wasn't going out every day and I've never been to a brunch. I wasn't clubbing. I wasn't, I don't know, this whole Dubai scene yes. when you're in your 20s. Sure. It's a typical thing, right? Sure. Um, I was only spending on sports. I would save, save, save and go to the mountain. Save, save, save and go to the mountain. But when it came to Everest, so my family never helped me with climbing mountains. So because they were supportive, but at one point they're like, we're not going to fund your death. If something happens, mm. I'm going to feel bad. And like, like I had a car accident when I was 18 and I had a nice car and it was a fast car. And my, and my dad is the one who got it for me. And he blamed himself after that accident. He's like, I'm, I'm the reason I got her this. I shouldn't have got her something. She should have something that's not fast and all that. Then we're not funding your trips. You do it on your own. But then they all knew how bad I wanted to do Everest. And I've been talking about Everest for like about what now? Three, four years to them. And, and then, this was after having climbed a few mountains. Yeah, well. yeah. yeah. And it's all funded by me. But then when it came to Everest, I was, I was short. On, I was looking for sponsorship. I don't want to pay for it. I'm looking for sponsorship, but it's really tough for me to get sponsored. Mm. Given whether since I'm Lebanese and you know the situation in Lebanon and I live in the UAE and like it's, it's too much happening when it comes to sponsorship. And I'm still trying to figure it out till today. But then um, on my birthday, um, I was turning 26 and um, the, the, they're like, OK, we don't know what to get you. We're going to give you the down payment and we believe you'll be able to sort everything out, everything else out. And down payment is like, what, about 20%, 30% of the total amount. And I had all the gear. I had everything. All I needed From the previous was, mountains, yeah. right? Yeah. All I needed was to, to pay for my expedition. So it was a birthday gift um, as a down payment. And I funded everything else. Mm. And this is how I made it. So I am definitely like, about, come on, I did not pay rent. I did not pay bills, which I'm doing now. And it's completely different. Sure. But I mean, back then, no, I was living with my family and I'm lucky. So I'm like, I wouldn't say it's 100 percent funded by them. Of course not. Sure. not like, but, but definitely there is a 20 percent, but not handed to me like yeah. that. No, I, I was working and you can tell my lifestyle is is extremely simple. Mm. I, these, I don't know brands or, um, no. All I do is train. I don't even have a trainer. 
I try to cut cost as much as I can. I trade on my own. I Google everything. I research everything. All I need is the expedition, is the funding for my expedition, which was coming from my work. And then I quit my job, and I said I will join my father. And we, uh, I was doing his accounting, so he has a, he runs a cleaning company. And um, I was doing this for two years, and I wasn't happy. It's not what I want. And it doesn't pay as much as well. Like I wasn't like moving forward. I wasn't growing in the career path. Mm. But it was paying the bills. But we had a deal. I travel whenever, whenever I want to travel, and you pay me whatever you want to pay me. He's like, okay, but obviously it's limited. Sure. <laughs> so I don't over travel as well. Yes. Um, and I did it like that. But then we opened our like small startup, which is an online cleaning portal, and <clears throat> it's built. It's happening. It's on. But then I decided, you know what, I cannot, I built it and everything is up there. It's a very nice platform, but I cannot work anymore. My, it's like killing my soul. Like I do not want to be in an office. I do not want to deal with numbers. I do not need to deal with administration. I want to work on mountain gypsy. So like given for the Western world, when they look at the Arab people that everything is given to us, Khalij is Dubai and I don't know what, no, and we can, we have the choice, and I choose not to take everything from my family because at one point they are not going to be there for me mm. by mm. default. So I'm I'm gonna have to learn how to do all these small things, and I'm doing it now. I've got so many questions for you. <laughs> Money aside, what's yeah. been like the singular sacrifice that you've you, you've you've had to make in order to get to where you are today? I sacrificed my master's degree. Okay. I sacrificed social life. I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> I have one friend. <laughs> the thing is, I Sounds have, like me. I have, I have uh, followers. I, I, I have, have one friend. I have followers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I don't have a social life. Um, I'm really not into the like outing, outing scene. I would like try to go out, but. It's just not you. Uh, but uh, it's not me. And yeah. I have, so I had to sacrifice these two. I, I sacrificed family time. Um, yeah, so family time, friends, and uh, my education. Mm. But I'm, I think I'm learning beyond master's degree at this point, because I wanted to do back then my CFA and those right. finance. But like, no, I'm no. The mountains are teaching me way more valuable things, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, since you're talking about you know le learning valuable things, uh, what discipline have you had to instill that that has helped you the most? Consistency. Okay. Consistency, determination, and a positive mindset. Mm. And it's not easy. But the positive mindset is the toughest one. Mm. Some days I wake up thinking I have achieved nothing. I'm not contributing to the world. And this is not okay. What's my purpose? Oh, yeah, I climb, but what am I doing? Who cares? And one day I would wake up. Damn, I've done so much and I still have a lot to do. And like, there's no time. What am I, 27? I don't, I don't, I don't, I cannot die soon. There's so much that I need to accomplish and do. And we can make a change here. We can make a change there. So this is the, like, this is the second one is what I try to focus on. But sometimes I'm, I'm a human. Yeah. And I have my downtimes. And they're horrible, but I hate them. But it's how you deal with them again. So I connected to the altitude. So I'm a human and my body's not made for the altitude. But once I was extremely sick, I was so like, I had the bad AMS. I was sleeping on the mountain. Like I would tell them, I'm gonna take a minute break and I would pass out, Yeah. like knocked out. And this is what life does as well. I get knocked out by negative thinking, but you need to know how to pick yourself back up and continue and resilience. How do you do that? Because say one of the techniques, mm. I've, I implemented this when I was doing your intro, yeah. and I also implement this when I'm going on stage and when I'm coaching others to go on stage. Mm. I tell people it's important to put yourself in the zone before you go. And yeah. so if my energy is down, because it's down a lot of the time, I have to make the choice yeah. of putting that energy right up or putting my mindset in the right you know, mental state. Mm. So I'll put in, I just put in USDA Corporate Thuggin. It's an old song from like 12 years or 13 years ago. Yeah. Rap song, but something about the song that every time I play it, I think it works for both of us. As soon as I play it, within about 60 seconds, I'm in a different mode. Nice. Boom. Mm. And so that's how I get myself in the zone. When I've worked with clients, sometimes it's the picture of the kid. I tell them, hey, before you go to deliver your talk, yeah. If I see them glowing because they're looking at their you know, three-year-old son, I'm like, put that on your home screen because mm. you can control this. 
The moment they call your name before you go on stage, turn it on, look at your son, get that feeling that you normally get. Now go on stage with that feeling. Yeah. You put yourself in the zone. Because you can't control so many things like waking up feeling down or depressed or bad news or mm. receiving an email saying this is there is a problem. But then you need to, it's game time. Yeah. You, you got to do something. So up. how do you do it? How do you, when you're talking about that mindset or that thing, like how do you change that? Oh, what am I doing to? Yeah, self-talk. Okay. The, I do a lot of self-talk. Every like, day? Yeah. Like Tima, Shu, Yella, we need, to, we, we need to save the world. Come on, mm. get up, get up, get up. I like go for a run. I try to exercise. Just to like sweat all the negative energy out. Two, uh, the moment I hear my mom saying, I'm so proud of you. Like, okay, like I need to do more. Mm. And uh, yeah, there's specific people around me who motivates me in one way or another just through a call. Uh, like a two minute call saying how well I'm doing and you're on the right track. You're on, you're, it's okay that you're falling, you're a human. You don't have to always be strong. It's okay, mm. but like you need to move on. And then I'm done. It takes me, it takes me like, it doesn't take me too much to pick myself up. That's what's nice. Yeah. Like I need to, I know I cannot continue being, I cannot continue feeling down. I cannot, I have a responsibility that I need to do. Mm -hmm. And I keep on reminding myself like, you're here for a purpose, get up, it's okay. And I start thinking about all those motivational speakers that I listen to, mm. how they start saying when like they have their downtime and I look at them where they are now. I always think if they, if this happened to this human, I'm just another human and I'm sure this is gonna happen for me. And I always tell myself, I know I'm gonna make it. Mm. I know, it's, it's, I'm 27, Sure. I still have a lifetime. Yes. I'm working as long as I'm doing something. You find me when I wake up, send emails, drive, pitch here, pitch there, do this, do that. It's in these times of frustration that you get your breakthroughs. Over time you look back and you go, hey, this was actually like one of the best things that happened for me. Yeah. Even though it didn't feel like it at the time. Yeah. But sometimes the doors close and it's actually good for you because you wanted to go down a path that over time you realize that wasn't a good path for me. I'm thankful. Again, this requires time for you to reflect on. Yeah. But you'll be able to go, I'm thankful those doors closed on me or things didn't work out yeah. because then I would have pursued it. I've tried many things over the years and it was painful because I failed at a lot of things. Mm. But I'm thankful because all those failures helped me stay, yeah. like to focus on what I like to do, my calling, what I've become really good at, what I've become known for in terms of a speaker or a public speaking coach, had any of those attempts actually worked, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. Gratitude, yeah. 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 And that's important. Yeah. Get inspired. Imagine if you could present yourself, your thoughts and your ideas with clarity and confidence. Imagine if you could speak to influence and impact. Imagine if you could communicate like a commanding, and charismatic leader. Well, you can, given the right information and the investment of effort from your end. How do I know that? As a public speaking coach, I work with CEOs, world leaders, and presidents. And when they hire me, they expect nothing short of results. And over the years, it's been two decades now, two challenges have risen for me being unable to help the majority of people. I'm usually on a plane, with the majority of my time being booked a good year or two in advance. And my one-on-one -on -one session to work with someone in person generally starts at $20,000. So we solved the problem by making my public speaking course available for you online. Everything that I teach my clients when I'm working one-on-one, -on -one, thoughts, tips, strategies, how to do things, all on video, all sequenced in the right order, for you to be able to watch, re-watch, practice, and refine your presentation, your speaking, and your overall communication skills. And guess what? You will get results. Now, you can have this course, not for the $20,000 that my clients pay me when we work one-on-one, -on -one. you can have it for $9.97. That's right, just $9.97. You might be thinking, well, why are you offering something that you charge $20,000 for for $9.97. It's simple, because those who want to work with me one-on-one -on -one will still hire me. But for many whom I might be out of their budget, this is a great way to develop their communication skills, to cut through the noise, to rise above the rest, and to beat 
their competition. If you're serious about wanting to develop your skills to be able to present your thoughts, your ideas, and yourself with clarity and confidence, to be able to speak, to influence and impact, and to communicate like a confident and charismatic leader, then this course is for you. Go on to kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash course and get started today. Motivation and speaking, uh -huh. like how did you start it? It was just random to be honest, it was really random. I was just frustrated, I got into sales. I was good at sales somehow just naturally because I was good with people. And um, then I was just when people would complain, I'm not very good at like doing handiwork. Yeah. Right. So if yeah, my mom asks me to do something, I'm not a man's man. Mm -mm. Right. And everyone knows this. You ask my middle brother Rami, he'll get things done. So with Kev, everyone's just given up. But I have a good thing of being able to see a picture and then suggesting I go, okay, you know, that's red and blue, and there's a gap here. You can use that to fill that gap. Okay. Okay. And okay, it really just started, yeah, with people just. Complaining, I'm like, are you just complaining for the sake of it or are you looking for an answer? If you're looking for an answer, here's my thought, try it out. Okay. And then they kind of grew and over time, just one thing led to another and people just said, hey, your stuff is good. You should talk more. Okay. Mm. You should get paid for it. Okay. And built on it. It was a long journey. How long has it been? Close to 20 years now. <laughs> yeah. Ya Allah, I know. That's a lot. Yeah, because when people go, I want to be a motivational, I'm like, good luck. Because it takes. It's there. I've seen people do it in, in a yeah, year. They become super Google successful. Looks to see me. He's an old, yeah, he's but, old but you have to uh, <laughs> you have to be willing to make the sacrifice regardless of time because that's like a, a summit you want to climb, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I've had yeah. individuals who've told me I've tried Everest or a different mountain because when they were doing the seven summits, and it was their third <laughs> attempt. I've done a Concagua twice. Yeah. yeah. So because they got to a point and. Conditions changed Same. and yeah. you're not going to risk it like you don't want to do yeah. crazy yeah. something to die. The purpose is to be able to climb it and come back down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it goes, it's disappointing, but you just have to take it on the chin and move on. So it's the same thing. I was just clear that this is something I want to do and then I'm willing to do whatever it takes. In my case, it was many years of hunger. But I was also in a position where I didn't have any kids. I chose not to have kids. Yeah. I chose to yeah. forego a relationship. Yeah. 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 All that for... When I look back at it, some of it was okay and some of it was silliness, just yeah. what have you. And because I've seen also individuals who put things in place and within 12 months they've come out of nowhere. Like I'm Jay Shetty is one of those who came out of nowhere. Because like he came because I think, uh, that's what I'm saying. But um, he had a videographer, he had the TV kind of thing in place. He had some good things in place. Yeah. So with strategy and what have you. And then very quickly within a year or two, he, he took off. Yeah, 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 yeah. So everything's possible, but you have to understand that your journey and as an individual will be different. So you have to be prepared to understand that this could be a one year path, could be a 10 year path mm. and whatever it is in between, am I willing to play this game? Yeah. 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 You briefly mentioned at the, at the, at the start that you did California. That yeah. was the exchange program for six months. Correct. Who were you before going there? Having lived in, you know, mm. being an, an Arab chick in the UAE. Yeah. And then how was that experience? Like how did that uh, exchange program shape yeah. you and in terms of thoughts or mm. ways okay. of looking at life, I guess. So as you said, the Arab chick living in the UAE, yeah. I was that. Uh, <laughs> <I couldn't, couldn't laughs> it, it, yeah, it was perfect. I mean, I was uh, I was into like fashion, people. I was into sports, mm -hmm. but I was more into the the, the, the luxury life. Okay. The Dubai scene. Sure. My friends, university, cars, all that, and like you. But still, uh, I was like a proper Arab with the family. Uh, specific concepts are not accepted and I was fine with it and then I got accepted into this exchange program in California and um, it was a big shock for my dad as well he didn't want me to go and then oh, you see as a woman I think for our parents huh? I, I, I mean as a woman it was a tough journey for me because yes. We live in, 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 in the Middle East, like the, the girl, and some people think we don't need women empowerment, but I, we need it a lot. No, you cannot go. Why? Because we're worried about you. No, you, a girl haram is going to go alone to the, uh, California. No, I wanted to go. And it was the same thing, presentation and stuff. I, I was persistent. I'm like, you know, I want to go. It took me a year. So anyway. You presented the case to them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if I wanted, I'd do whatever it takes to do it. <laughs> well, I'm interested to know, how did you influence your parents? Like, what was in that presentation to get them? It's true, because this applies in business. Like, if you want funding, exactly. you, you have to become good at presenting your pitch. 
yeah. to get funding. <laughs> I wish I could do this with sponsors, though. <laughs> hey, sponsors, if you're looking at this, she, you'll get great value from her. You should be sponsoring her. I mean, so I told them but, I want to go for an exchange program. And they said no. La. Why? La, yes. <laughs> because it's California. We don't have any family in California. You're going to be alone. I said, no, but I can take care of myself. I was like 19. They're like, no, you cannot. My mom is like super, no, she needs to go. Let her be, let her be. My mom is somebody who wants me to spread my wings and fly all the time. God bless. And then my dad was like, ah, who's going to take care of her? And she can take care of herself. She'll figure it out. No, okay, so no. mom was on your side. It yeah, was just oh. presenting to your dad. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's always like that. And then um, I did this presentation saying, so... These are the dates. I'm going to take these courses. So I'm taking three finance courses and two marketing courses. And I'm going to live in this place. And I print pictures of the place, the campus. It's safe. There's security. Da, da, da. La. Oh. Okay, another one. <laughs> and then I spoke to, like, he had a, his uncle who passed away. But, like, he would influence him. And then he's like, what are you doing to your daughter? Of course she needs to go. This is how she will understand the world. And his uncle was a traveler back then. So uh, I got there and then... So you realize this, so you went to the uncle asking for the, yeah, the help with I influence? Had, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then I... I, I like it how kids are so resourceful, <laughs> you know? We tend to forget to be resourceful as we grow up. Yeah. But as kids, this creativity... We're so like, true. Yeah? You will find a way. Yeah. Okay, so the first presentation didn't work. Uncle yeah. is an influencer. Yeah. Use him. And then, yeah, I was like, okay, fine, you can go. Okay. Hello, God will protect you. I said, okay, perfect. We went, uh, I went alone, and uh, I, I met, uh, like, as I went there, it, it was a completely different place for me. Like, it's California, so many people. I land in the airport, I'm outside waiting for a cab. I never took a cab in the UAE. Mm. I don't know what is it like to take a cab. And then I got to the campus, and the campus is huge, and everything is different. And this is where my brain started just, like, it's a cultural shock, right? And I'm, and I'm alone. And I need to figure everything out on my own. I'm like, damn, like, this is what I signed up for, but I know I'm going to have fun. Let's enjoy this. And then I met those girls who are, are like, I love them till the date we meet. So five girls, one from uh, Germany, one from France, one from Denmark, and one from Sweden. And they were on the same exchange program. All doing an exchange program. Yeah. Nice. And what happened is we were in different dorms. So they put us, so me and uh, the Danish girl with two American girls. And then it was mix and match. So we, like, like blending with their culture. There's no really proper culture in California. It's a mix as well. Oh, and I had my own fitness class. At one point, they thought I was making money at the gym because I would have around 22 girls coming in making my uh, high intensity interval workout. And there's 22 girls behind me. I have videos and they, they're like, is this Tima's class? People were showing up. We heard this I class makes you lose class. weight. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my. And then I did my whole group. And it was a lot of fun. I did some weird stuff. Like, like I had to like rob a vending machine because we saw it was coming out. We had coins coming out of the vending machine you just can do crazy things and i felt that i can do anything in the world because now there's no restrictions mm. there's no limitations and there is no judgment you can be whatever you want to be a frog go ahead be a frog it's nobody is looking at you and you did the class because you just felt active i've been or you were active, active and yeah, you just yeah. felt like i just need to expand my energy no, i was so into bodybuilding so i had uh -huh. my apps back then and okay. like my muscles and all that yeah. so like i was legit into it and i used to take a lot of protein and pills and stuff like that okay but i got over that phase thank god <laughs> but i mean like it was an eye opening to so many things mm. knowing about their backgrounds and also like uh, communicating with other americans there and they had different kind of like uh, topics on, on religion and culture and mm -hmm. how they see the black and white. And I went deep with them. And then the teachers, my, my professors, like they would treat me different. And I started understanding discrimination, stereotypes. I started understanding so many concepts that wasn't even there because I was just this girl who went to school, came back home, went to university, came back home, had some friends. like And, and just being familiar with just a culture. Exactly. Right? As opposed to the many exactly. different yeah. ways of thinking. And then so. when I came back, I was a completely different person again. Get inspired. You know this by now, that we are the number one YouTube show slash podcast that's coming out of the Middle East from Dubai. If you like the idea of having your brand reach at least a million eyeballs per episode, 
then feel free to reach out to my office on kevinabdurrahman.org. Without further delay, let's continue this great conversation. From that experience, what would you say were you know, one or a couple of things that you say has stayed with you? So in terms of it, it's been life altering. Like, uh, you know, for some individuals, it's the first time when they travel to a different country to go and do university. Yeah. It's the first time they actually do the washing. Oh, it was for me. Right, or ironing. I hate like, laundry, yeah. Yeah, it was the, the whole concept time, yeah. of laundry is all new or doing yeah. your bed. Like, I never did my bed back home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what stayed really with me is um, the open mindedness because those girls really helped me a lot with seeing things differently and women empowerment. I realized how like mistreated we are in the Middle East as women because they would like sit and discuss concepts like if you don't have a job as a woman because if you're pre because you're pregnant then the government is paying and I'm just like if this happens in the Middle East you know how many women would be successful easily mm -hmm. just some support yeah. from governments yeah. and I like there's so much concepts that they discussed about how they they being a woman in the country is so good and when I look back at the Middle East, I'm like, no, this needs to change. And the and great thing is today, there's a lot of it. Like there's, there's, There there's, is a lot of yeah. women empowerment, but there's a very big difference between a real woman empowerment right. or, oh, let's create a campaign that would make money. What is the most trending topic right now? Right. Oh, woman empowerment. I'm going to do this for women empowerment. Yeah, and at some point it was, um, you know, what is the CSR? That, that was the, uh, the trending thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are really great individuals, even spokes. Mm. people, uh, women's spokespersons who, who are really heavily promoting yeah. women. No, no, there are here. real proper campaigns. I don't know campaigns. if you know, like uh, Rana Nawaz, mm. um, Joy Ajaluni. Mm. But getting back to the Middle East, the Arab world is, is really... Room for improvement. Yes. Yeah. It's like the playground for improvements here. And this is what people are not saying. So what's, what's like, what happens is we build something, we become so good at it, and we take it and go use it in, in the Western countries. Mm. That's why we don't have so much talents anymore in the Middle East. Mm. But I had the option to leave the Middle East, but I chose not to. I want to keep my talent here. Mm. I want to grow here. If I can get this title of the first Arab woman to finish the Exploring Grand Slam, then I will have a new stage. Because this, the, the, And the thing is, titles do work, unfortunately. You need to earn a title for people to listen to you. Mm. And the most strongest thing that you can use in this era is voice. Mm. If you have a voice and you have the proper mindset, then you can create a change. Mm. And with titles, it's just there to support it. I remember as in my research process, I, um, I had found out that you had helped a group of young Emirati yeah, girls I mean, yes. go up Kilimanjaro. Tell Correct. us about that, because um, they were just between 15 and 17, right? Correct. Yeah. So, um, Emirati Women Day was on the 28th of August, mm -hmm. and I'm working with this organization very closely. I take those girls on hikes uh, once or twice a week. And I love this organization. It's run by um, uh, a very powerful, uh, like as a like strong woman, and uh, she's Emirati, and she makes the girls do that's not normal in their culture which is nothing bad, like hiking, sports, uh, scuba diving. Fantastic. They do a lot and they're young. They're teaching them young. Fantastic. If, if you, would you like to share the name? We'll place the link. In the, Sajaya. Yeah. Yeah, so Sajaya organization, uh, Sajaya Ladies uh, Club. Cool. If you shoot me the link, yeah. I'll include it in the um, show notes. Lovely. Yeah. So like they, they, and they have a lot of girls and they teach them cooking, uh, singing, uh, fitness, everything. So part of it was hiking. And they were planning this uh, Kilimanjaro thing and I became very close with them and mm -hmm. I was training them for about a year and I wasn't going with them. But then they decided that no, Tima is going to lead them because the girls got used to me and they believed, oh, if she is there, we will all make it. And this is what happened. I was just there to make sure they all make it. And uh, they did. It, they made it on the 28th of August. Well done. And it was a very good achievement for Emirati Women's Day. Such a young group. Yeah. I didn't think you could even do it at that kind of I had bracket. to, it was tough for me it's though. A lot of work, right? <laughs> it was a lot of work. I was going to say, 15 year old going up a mountain. I can't get a 15 year old across the road. And Kilimanjaro is not easy, like 5,885 meters. Right. Five, eight. It's a lot. Mm. So like six girls made it first and then I had to go back down and then bring the light another one go back down. It was, it was a tough one, but it was a new feeling for me because it felt what's it like to have someone else yes, achieve the guidance, their dream. The, yeah, the mentoring is And huge. it was just beautiful. I'm like, like, that felt really nice. Like when I got to the summit, 
so, so I was leading. So I'm like, okay, I went to the back. I'm like, I just want to see you like touching the summit first. Like go. And it was a beautiful moment to see like they, I never cried on any summit. I don't know why. Like, but they were crying. And every time I'm with someone who summits something, whether it's their first time or second, they, they burst with tears. For me, I, it's, it's not even on Everest. But I mean, it's nice to see their tears of happiness and like sure. they achieved something. And when they came back, they built, and now I still take them hiking, but now those girls are like my assistants. We take other girls from the organization nice. hiking and they teach them what I taught them and what they learned from Kilimanjaro. And last weekend, uh, they decided to do a trip without me and those girls led and they're doing very well. So this is how you shed. Yes. So now there's eight girls who can somehow lead and they know when to drink water, when to use your sunscreen, when what boots to wear, what gear to wear, all of this. Good job. Mm -hmm. That's paying it forward. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's really nice. Thank you. So speaking about paying forward, um, there's the breast cancer event. And um, I have a friend who I used to work with and she had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. She was diagnosed and I saw her process of her getting out of it and she like fought it and she was okay. And then I was climbing uh, in uh, Oceana, the highest active, uh, uh, the highest mountain in the Oceana, uh, Karsten's Pyramid. So that's instead the one in Australia, because mm -hmm. the one in Australia is like 2000. The one that is <laughs> 4,000. Because <I'm> <laughs> you're cool. Anyway, so I was climbing in the Oceana and I see a message saying that Tanya uh, has her cancer again and I don't know what. So I took that poster with me saying, you can do it, fight it, and I'm climbing this mountain for you in every step. And I did a small thing. But then me and this woman, I barely see her, but I built this bond online. No, just with making, another climber? No, 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 with a girl who had the, the breast cancer, cancer yeah. because she was diagnosed for the second time. Mm. So when it was October, I'm like, you know what? This woman needs to share her message because she really have authentic content on how she fought it. And I saw her Instagram post, how she used to carry like her stuff because of the, the breast cancer and the chemo. And, and it's, it's really like tough. So I'm like, okay, I want to create an outdoor event where she can come and speak. Mm. What should I do? I'm like, you know what? That would be more interesting if I make her speak. What if there's, I Googled if, if there's a guy who, with a breast cancer and I found one and he survived. I tried getting in contact with him and it was easy. So I got both two speakers, a male and a female. And I had collaborations with different brands from Ford and Decathlon and um, like the Yellow Cleaning and the, like different, whatever Everest gave me in terms of exposure, I, I built some collaborations with brand. I asked them, look, I'm doing a free hiking event for a woman's, uh, for the breast cancer day. Mm. And I spoke to MediClinic and i said i need support what do you want so i asked for it for an extra car uh, i used it as a stage i asked my clinic they gave me like 150 giveaways that has all the awareness stuff and yeah. the branding products and like any woman above 40 40 years old would get a mammogram done for 50 dirhams instead of 1700 dirhams That's if she amazing. comes to the event yeah um, and Decathlon like shared my post everywhere in their stores and my, the post was being reshared. We got interviews. We had, we were on the radio announcing it. It was in Gulf news. It was in Khalid news and it was all within 15 days on the phone mm. making like, and I would like, and it was all me just connecting everything I have to make it happen. And I'm like, I hope, and the Sajaya girls were included as well, because they were going to help me with the people, because I cannot guide like a lot of people alone. And then suddenly I was able to get a police car and a, a first aid car and a sta the speakers, everything was and part of what you're doing is place. actually a hike. It was just a march for, I wanted like, to create a buzz for Breast Cancer Awareness Day. And I wanted Tani to put her story out there with Max Ferdon. And um, yes, it happened. And 150 people showed up. My wow. heart was going to stop when I saw a lot of people. I'm like, it's, it's working. All the collaborators joined. Uh, they were tense. So what I did was, it was five kilometers hike slash march into the mountains, 2.5. And then we built, um, we put the car as a stage. We put the giveaways. It was so basic. It, it did, nobody paid anything. It was all contribution. And then there were four tents 
for people to like sit under. And people March 2.5 heard uh, Tanya and Ferdan's story. And there was a doctor who specialized in breast cancer. And people had questions that it was back and forth. And they took the giveaways and there were food. Some people collaborated with food, water, everything. And then the cleaning company came and removed everything to leave no trace. 2.5 back out of the mountain. And that was a wrap. That and, was something. And it's amazing. Nice. And it all came from you just deciding, hey, yes, I need to do this. I want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Paying, pay, giving back, paying it forward, giving back with the mountains they've given me. That's really nice. A quick one as well. Oh God, like, because I love sharing these. These are more important than my climbing because I want people to start doing that. Like use what you have for humanity. Yesterday was it yesterday, Valentine's. So like I was talking to my boyfriend and like, it's Valentine's. I'm like, okay, and it's a long distance. I'm like, oh, okay. We were making fun of it. Yeah. And then I saw your post. Are you there? Yeah. yeah, I'm like, and then I, he was thinking, what would you do? I'm like, hmm, I'd do something for humanity, for the love of humanity. He's like, okay, and then closed. And then I just like went in my car, I'm like, I'm going to donate blood. Because like, seriously, for the love of humanity, what if somebody needs blood right now? And like, this is love. And I went and I donated blood. And I don't like, I, I, I'm always worried about people thinking I'm trying to brag or something, but I'm just trying to put for you an idea for you to do it so it becomes a multiplier effect. So imagine everybody does this on Valentine's sure. Day. To donate blood, yeah. Yeah. It's just another campaign for Valentine's Day, which is nice, you know what I mean? Like pay it forward, do some. It's nice to give back and not expecting something in return. And the reality is if you do enough good, good will come back. Yeah. yeah. And this is what the mountains have given me. Mm. Beyond your parents mm. or individuals, you know, mountaineering, you know, mountaineering individuals, who inspires you and why? Myself. <laughs> I mean... My damn self. Pat myself on the back. <laughs> and nothing wrong with all this. I mean... Yes, because when I started, I reached out to so many people and nobody replied to me. Mm. And this is something I'll never do to anyone. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> because yeah. it's not nice. I did not know what mountaineering is, but I wanted to do something. I did not know how to start, but I wanted to do th something. Of course, there's a lot of respect to uh, the motivational speaker who gave me everything I mm. needed at the What's beginning. What's his name? Omar Samra. Okay. He's the first Egyptian guy to climb uh, Mount Everest. Respect, Omar. Yes. In actual fact, you know what? <laughs> uh, here's an official invitation. We would love to have you on the show. Amazing. So I'll, uh, I'll drop you a line. Let's connect up. Next time you're passing through Dubai, let's have you on the show. And since you mentioned him, we'll place his link as well. That's so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Nice. I mean, he was there. He gave me the information that I need to start. He told me there's of this trip. Head out with them. He made me believe I can do it. But then... Where is the rest? Mm. I texted almost everybody who have climbed a mountain or something. And you cannot be always busy. I'm sure you check your Instagram. You, I texted you and you, you checked it and replied. And that's what I do. I will not ignore anyone. Even if I'm busy, I will have to figure out a way or a day where I just get back to people. Whether it's how do I start, where to start, what's this, what's that. Mm. It's nice. And you never know what's going to come out of it. Whether they do it or not, it's not my problem. Mm. But you need to put what you know and you need to give your time to people. Yeah. I appreciate the point you make, but I also appreciate the fact that you didn't let no responses hold you back. Because uh, sometimes we'll people will use the fact that, oh, I tried reaching out, I wanted help. I don't, I can't reply to every single person. Of course not. Yeah. It was by chance that I logged on, your message was there, I replied to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the reality is what's more inspiring is the fact that you didn't let the no responses I would give the benefit of the doubt, of course. It's a, you, you just, not you just kept account. searching. Yes, yeah. yeah. Because at the end of the day, we don't know the different things people are going through. Of course. Right? But, but still, you didn't let that stop you though. Yeah, but like when it comes to inspiration and like even after I made it and all that and I connected with those people I texted, which is fine. Mm. But like as who inspires me, I think uh, I'm doing okay. Good job. Good job. I hope I don't sound yeah. like with a no. big ego. Oh, it's just, I actually think it's really powerful it's, it's, because uh, I, I also think you know, uh, inspiration should begin with within. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Before you seek outside. Yeah. Did you did you have a failure or do you have a favorite failure that you've learned the most out of? My favorite failure. I failed at Concagua, for sure. Yeah. So besides that, a failure that's that's really been a springboard yeah 
Yeah, you got in. I think the biggest failure, and I've never discussed this, but we like the first. Yes, you are we've, the first. We've had many firsts. <laughs> Please do share. My biggest failure is uh, I got engaged when I was 21, mm-hmm. and it was a very toxic relationship. I was just being stubborn because I wanted it, because it was no, you cannot do that, but I wanted to do that, mm. and that was a very big failure for me, and it took me some time to recover. No, because of like because I loved myself way too much, and I think I mistreated myself. Uh, that's the biggest failure. What did you learn from it? That's that's helped you become a better person today. To never allow my freedom to be jeopardized to anyone. Mm. Freedom is my number one. Otherwise, I'm not who I am. Mm. I have to be free. I cannot be like contained or like held down or no. If your friends, they were to use one word, mm. Tima is that kind of a person. What would be some of the words? Natural and real. She is what you I you, what you get what you get what you see is what you get literally. Mm. Oh, I get that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's a, that's a vibe. Yeah. On a mountain, you have to be patient. Yeah. Right. But you don't come across as a patient person. No. <laughs> How does that work? Here, you can't rush it. When you're on a mountain, you you can't go against nature. Like there will be times where. So I am. It's you wait at the crazy. storm, but you don't come across as no. a patient person. So on the mountain. I don't even know who I am anymore. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'm so patient. But like, okay, on Everest, when I was coming down, I was done. I'm <laughs> I was coming down. This <laughs> no. I was like trash talking a lot at one point because I was so angry. People were ho- holding on to me and like, I felt I'm going to fall down. And it, it, like coming down is like harder than going That's up right, at one yes. point. It's, it's, it, and it's slippery and it was so crowded and I just wanted to leave. I'm like, like, I did not die going up. I do not want to die coming down. Is this where that picture went viral you're yeah. talking about? Or yeah. What was the reason there was So there is line? one drop <coughs> from uh, Camp Four, which is at 8,000 meter, to 8,848 meters. It's one drop going up, one drop coming down. And everybody is on the same rope. Clipping, and this was unclipping, clipping, unclipping. Congested? Yeah. Because of bad uh, weather? Yeah, so we only had like two, two, two three days of uh, good weather window. Okay. So people had to all go at the same time. We were about 800 people on the mountain this year, I think. Holy smoke. Mm. It was a lot. So the, the, definitely Everest is becoming a commercial thing as well. I wouldn't say no. It's becoming way easier to climb it. There's fixed ropes. The Sherpas go up and fix the ropes. It's not easy, but it's easier than what it was before. Mm. You have to be patient. I try to be patient. I am patient most of the time. But in the city, I'm not patient. I know that. And I try to work on it. But on the mountain, you don't have a choice. Because if you disrespect the mountain, I really believe that the mountain hears and sees everything. Mm. The moment you disrespect the mountain, good luck. It will, I always call her a she. She will not be nice. Mm. Best you learn your lesson before you go up. Yeah. Yeah. There is a saying, say, with helicopter crashes or you know, accidents that happen, that the accidents or the crashes happen before takeoff. Yeah. And that's the thing, because if you choose to disregard nature or yeah. the mountain or what have you, with that decision of we got to get up there no matter what, then it's gone. You, you've already created your own death before you even started. Yeah. That's the fact that you were trying to attack. That's why we don't say we conquered the mountain. I, yeah. I hate this word. I, you conquered Everest. I did not conquer Everest. I climbed Everest and it allowed me to climb it. Mm, well Otherwise, she, she, Everest. She allowed me to climb it because a lot of people didn't make it. I mm. If you go up with an ego and thinking you're going to crush the mountain and conquer the mountain, no, you cannot do that. You're lucky if the mountains allow you to be on top and you see a different side of the world. That's, that's a blessing. Mm. But otherwise, if you go up with that ego, then like this, it will not work. Mm. Your parents, since you, you touched on them, you know, mom and dad, they seem to be two different personalities. Yeah. What did you learn from each? Like, what's the one thing you learned from each one that you feel that it's become part of your DNA? So logic and determination for my father. Okay. Um, sensitivity and uh, the love of life for my mother. We all have different voices, so mm. different individuals will resonate with us, whether it's the youth or women, mm. men, whoever it is. Yeah. If they resonate with your voice, what advice would you give them? So let's 
speak in terms of humanity at the beginning. Mm -hmm. For us to develop as humans, I really believe we need to be exposed as much as possible from the young age. So those who have already kids who are young, expose them. Instead of giving them an iPad, tell them travel, go outside, ride a bicycle, walk, run, do something, be mm -hmm. active. We're not trees. We're not made to be in one place. Don't allow your child just for you to have more time to give them something, you'll entertain yourself. So you need to make them see the world. Mm. You need to be outside. Uh, also, as parents and as people and whatever, travel. You need to see the world. That's the only way you will learn new culture. You will understand those cultures and religions and the whys mm. and why does this culture do this. Dubai is a very nice place because it does Amazing. offer this. Yeah. Dubai offers a huge diversity. And this is, I think, one of the reasons that contributed to my personality. Because in school, I had friends from all over the world who lives here. And everybody understands everybody's culture. Mm. So it was a given. Uh, but then when you travel to their countries, you see another side yeah, of them of and the world. Mm. And if you live like them, you spend more time, that's even more amazing because now you, you, you take the best practices. So this is what I did throughout. So I've traveled to six continents and I believe I, I love all of them equally. But there's something very special about every continent that you learn from. Mm. Not just the continent, then there's the country, and then there's the city, and then there's the village, and then there's one person in that village, you know? Mm. But you went all the way to the other side of the world to see it. And you come back with it, and you share it with people. And it's nice. It's like making your own culture, if you want to say that, by taking the best practices. So to see the world in a different way mm. and like your mind will open to new perspective and new things you might not be a sports person but you, you can you can become i don't know a writer sure. or a cook or just because you traveled you went to the other city you went to the other side you cannot be in one place and develop you have to move yeah. and okay if, if financially speaking it's it's uh, it's stranding you or something go to the next city move do not stay yeah. in one place. Change work. Be be as dynamic as the culture is. Cultures are like dynamic. Yeah. Time, everything is dynamic. And we have to be dynamic. Otherwise, you, you won't be able to catch up with the world. You'll be way behind. And the world is moving so fast that it's really hard to catch up with it. But just in your own way, create your own values and cultures and beliefs. And create the person who you want to be. Since you mentioned this, I mean, I agree with you because every time I've traveled a lot over the last 20 years, but every time I travel, <clears throat> I feel that just, you know, your sense of smell, your sense of sight, what you hear, all this is different. Yeah. And so you might get used to a certain type of sound or types of sounds. When you travel, you hear different sounds. Mm. You'd be surprised what that could instigate to yeah. even help your creativity. Or like you said, it might inspire you to be a cook, to write, to to do whatever it is you want to do, 100%. The point that you made about create the person that you want to be, I wanted to ask you this question earlier now. Th thank you for reminding me with that. In order for me to achieve some of the things I have, yeah. and when I look at a lot of successful individuals, when they've achieved their level of success or the things they wanted, dreams, goals, what have you, whether it's a, a type of home, a car, um, Olympic gold medal, whatever it was, or traveling the world, they had something that would they, they would refer to on a daily basis. You know, something like a vision board. Yeah. Something I've done as well. Mm. Um, I need to do more of, and something many of my friends have done, and you know, they're sewered by it. It could be a mantra that they read every day, or it could be things that they see because life gets busy. Yeah. And there is a saying: many of us want things, but then life gets in the way, and then you forget if you don't have something that reminds you. Yeah. Have you ever used vision boards? Yes. Yeah. Tell this us about it. This is how I started, actually. Okay. So um, when I climbed uh, Elbrus and I understood what the seven summits are and what's going on and how to finish it and how many people have finished it, I'm like, okay, I think I have a picture on my phone. So I got a paper and I drew the seven summits and I put a date on every mountain and I drew myself here and I wrote an NGO update and like I drew the world here and I did like all those arrows, things leading to things that I, through climbing, I will become the mountain gypsy see if I climb this one, two, three, and I want to do Everest in 2020 or maybe before it in brackets. And I did according 
like I summited each summit according to the dates according I wrote. According to the picture you drew. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm still stuck with Antarctica and I never had a date on Antarctica anyway because I knew it's so expensive. But I didn't have the Explorer Grand Slap, so I need to do a new vision board. Sure. But then I said like I want to have an NGO and I connected the dots and then I said uh, we'll work with companies and this company and that company and I'll do this. And it was like a very nice art piece and I sticked it up in my room. And so far we've done six out of the seven from it. Well done. And is this, where did you place this? Was this something you saw once a week, once a day, three times a day? No, no, where I put it, it as a frame in my room. I would see it at any time I would look around. So literally every day? Yeah. Right now I have on my board uh, uh, three words. You mm. will make it. Because I have a lot of self-doubts at this point mm. in life, which is okay. Yes. But I see it every day. You will make it. Even if I'm in self, it says it, I wrote it and I keep on looking at it. Yes. I know. I'm I have friends that, that, that actually do it on the, on their mirror. So yeah. the morning mirror that they look at so every day when it. they're brushing their teeth or in the evening, they, they have, you know, different things. Something that them. you want to, yeah. yeah. Because I'm in self that and I need a reminder. So every time I look around the house, it says you will make it. I'm what I'll happy. recommend is you check out our uh, first episode with DJ Bliss. Oh, I'll check it out. Yeah, he's okay. the, the top DJ. Yeah, I know him. Uh, in the region. Yeah. And uh, towards the end of it, he shares the mantras that he goes through on a daily basis. Ah, super. Yeah, and, he was like, and he was telling me, he goes, just try this for a month and you tell me if it's different or not. But I'm a believer, so you don't have to preach to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so definitely check that out. I'll check it out. Because I remember when we were reading it while doing the edits, it was powerful. I, I sent him a message because I go over the episodes a second time to take summary notes. Yeah. And I remember I got to that part and I was like, boy, this is powerful stuff. This is stuff we know. But it's just different when you verbalize it. When you verbalize it, when you execute it. Yeah. Right? So I know the importance of vision boards. When I implement it, it works. When I don't implement it, guess what? It doesn't work. It's like anything in life. You know what you need to do in terms of good nutrition. Good nutrition, uh, go to the gym if yeah. you want a certain kind of body. Exactly. But knowing is not going to get you there. Yeah. You got to do it. Mm -hmm. Same principle applies. Yeah. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but you've had to push through comfort zones. Yeah. But because you said you, you, you don't have doubt or you didn't have doubt or you didn't have fear, did you realize that you had to push through comfort zones to get to the different things yes. that you wanted to? Yes, just like the mountains. Yeah. Mm. Like, at, like if there's this wall on the Everest called Lotse Face. I stood up at Camp 2. And it was, the sun was still up and I was looking at the Lotse face and everybody talks about the Lotse face. And it's an ice wall, a blue ice wall, super shiny. And I'm just like, how are we going to up there? Like, how are we going to get up there? It doesn't make sense. And I could see the camp and the camp is on the slope. And I can see like, like it's so windy up there and there's no way we're going to go. How? But then when you're in it, you have to do it. You, I have to do it, otherwise I'm not going to get to the summit, right? But I can see the obstacle and I can see how tough it is. And in my head, it's looking impossible. But in the back of my head, I know I will have to go through it. Mm. Other people have been through it. Even if there is no one has been, we have to try, right? And like after you do it the first time, the second time was, so I had to do it twice because of the, of the rotations. And the same thing in life. I look at things. Right now, I'm in a very uncertain situation after Everest and I'm looking for sponsorship and I'm looking for this and I want to become a motivational speaker and I want to become, I'm doing stuff. But it's not like, it's not exactly what I want. But I, I can see the obstacles and I can see how much I have to go through, but I will go through it. Mm. Because if I'm not going to go through it, then how will I get there? It's exactly like the mountains. And what's funny about the mountains, it's like the main metaphor of life. Any metaphor you want to give about life, you relate it to the mountains. Yeah. So mountains really has, have, putting me, have been putting me on track in, in many different things in life without me feeling it it's subconsciously. Like I, I'm, the resilience that I have, the tolerance that I now have, and the way I react to the really negative situation has changed drastically after mountain climbing. Mm. Like, like it's, there's, okay, we have a problem. Are we gonna focus on the problem or the solution? On the mountain, if you have a problem, the, the last thing you wanna think about is the problem. You need to fix it now, now, otherwise we're dying. We're talking about life and death. Mm. And I deal with things like this right now. Yeah. I don't sit and dwell on the problem and oh my God. Okay, let's get out of it. And this is one of the reasons I pick myself up faster now. Yeah, you know, do you, I know have, sorry. Yes, go ahead. do you have a particular process that you follow to, to 
to not dwell in the Yeah. So not too long ago, there was something, a very bad situation that happened. And I was extremely shocked, like, how can this happen? Like, there's no way. But then, first, I need to accept it. Mm. Second, I need to let it out. And to let it out, I cry. I'm a human. Excellent. I cried it out maybe for two days. Every time I remember it, I, I, I just needed to get out of my system and it's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And I felt so weak. And then I stopped working out and I just want to be lazy. But in my head, I said, I cannot stop working out for more than two days. This is not okay. And um, I had to do something that would like fulfill my soul that doesn't include a lot of effort, but just for me to heal because I, I was in the shock and the shock wasn't going. So I went to the beach, I swam, I sat down and I meditated. And then I said, look, it's done. I let it out. I cried. What else can I do? I'm in the shock. The shock is over. So I accepted it. I, I, I let it out. And now I'm reflecting on it. And after reflecting on it, what do I want to do? Do I want to continue dwelling? Because I can. Or do I want to prove it all wrong? No, I will prove it all wrong because I'm not somebody who someone is going to put down by words. So pick myself back up. Go to my laptop. Continue my work. And as if nothing happened, you wouldn't even tell that I went through anything. What, what's interesting here is this, this critical point that you just said it, but I think many won't realize it's critical. The choice of asking the question, because the quality of questions we ask yeah. right, is a reflection of the quality of life we have. Correct. Right? Here you can ask the question, why is it happening to me? Mm -hmm. Or you ask a different question. Exactly. Why? Okay, so I'm doing my life coaching course mm -hmm. right now. Why? is one of the worst ways to ask a question, right. whether to yourself or to anyone, because you feel you feel like you, somebody's attacking you. Sure. You're attacking yourself. I'm not going to attack myself. No, I love myself. Sure. What put yourself in a victim yeah. mentality? What know? made me get to where I am today? Mm. How did this happen? What's causing it? How can I fix it? What do I need to do to move forward? I'm not gonna stay stuck in it, and I will not. I refuse to get things affect that get into me. I refuse. More than three days? No. I no. I will not allow it. Mm. It's like, do you accept somebody to come and slap you? No. Will I accept somebody come and slap my brains by by stuff? Mm. No. So I need to block it. I need to block it, and it's hard. It's not easy. I do say it. I know there's a process, and I follow. Yes, but there's a lot of pushing, and mm. there's a lot of mental game again. I will not allow this to get to me. I refuse to be put down by anyone. Mm. I refuse this. this. These are my values. These are my beliefs. What is my next step to move forward? I'm done. I did everything it takes to heal myself with this. Now let's take the next challenge. What are some good questions you ask yourself? What's your purpose? Mm. And how are you going to achieve your purpose? Mm. And what are the steps that you need to do to move forward? But then I get lazy again. I'm a human. Sure. I, I get, I get, I, and then I go down and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We have something to do. Mm. Tima, who you are, what do you want? Mm. We have the world to like say, let's get to, to work. Right. Do you motivate people? But how do you motivate yourself? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I, I get asked that a lot. Or people have an assumption because I'm a motivational speaker. You're always motivated. That I'm always yeah. motivated. And I've shared this countless times. Uh, that there are many days I wake up and I'm not feeling like it. So first of all, don't talk to me before an espresso. <laughs> it's just become a life rule. It's a life rule. Um, it's true. That is not true. That's not true. But you know, just nobody. It doesn't matter how loved or close you are yeah. to me. Just let's not chat until I have a coffee. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> you got to know your strengths and weaknesses. And for me, I need to have a coffee before we start functioning. Because before the cogs start moving. And then the reality is there are times where I'm on a flow and could, this could be for months. And there, there are times where literally every day I'm not feeling it. I feel lazy. I feel down for whatever reason. I didn't have a good sleep. Mm. My sciatic has been, you know, um, playing up. Um, and over the years, I've made the decision of enjoying being miserable. I'm guilty of it. Nice. And they, I've done it for hours. I've done it for days and I've done it for weeks. And then over time, you know, with age, you hopefully have wisdom. I look back and I go, hey, Kev, this hasn't worked for you. 
right? Mm. So if you're going to have a bad time, you have to choose. And being a motivational speaker, it's only right to be... Don't you feel guilty not, sometimes? No, 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 not at all, because I'm authentic. Very nice. Right, so as long as you're authentic, yeah. I'm authentic about everything. Like, so I won't say anything. Like, I remember telling my brother, don't have ugly kids because I can't fake <laughs> saying they're nice. <laughs> I actually did say that. Yeah. If you know me, you know I'm, I'm straight up. Yeah, yeah. That's why I don't have You're too like many me. friends. I don't, I don't have, have too filter. many friends. Yeah. I, I say there's a filter between the brain and the time. Right. I, it's gone. I don't have it. Yeah. I, don't I think you're the same. <laughs> and so, so to answer your question, it's going back to what I mentioned about putting myself in the zone. I know that I shouldn't have a conversation with anyone before a coffee. But I also know that I need to be at optimal levels if I'm hitting a stage or if I've got work I need to do. Or if I'm meeting up with a client. So I can't say I'm having a bad day. Yeah. You might feel like you're having a bad day. Do something about it, Kev. So what, what works for you? Go to the gym. That works for me. Go for a run. That works for mm. me. Uh, now that I'm doing the podcast, it's even easier. But before, I'd just go on YouTube and I'd look at a stand-up comedian or I'd look at an inspirational figure whom I like. Let's say, for example, Richard Branson. Watch one of his interviews. Or me. Or my brother. <laughs> Watch one of his interviews. Um, or I'd go, you know, pick up a book. Within 10 minutes of reading a great book, like a couple of pages of a great book, boom. Podcast, there's absolutely no excuses. Today, just about everyone has a podcast. Pick individuals who their voice resonates with you. I listen to literally any one podcast, 10, 20 minutes. Have you ever listened to yourself? I dislike that. Me too. Yes. <laughs> that I dislike. <laughs> that is true. Sometimes I do that. At, at my peak, I do look at myself. I gotta lie. <laughs> but but this is the thing of reality that we're all humans and we all we all face our you know we've got bad days, we've got down times, and there's a reality. But this is the thing that people don't understand. Right. You're a motivational speaker. You yes. always have to be inspired and motivated and like so up for it and like hard. No, what's important is not that being up there all the time. What's important is realizing that if I'm here, I know what I need to do and I choose to to not be here. Exactly. Yeah, not not I choose not to do this. Yeah. I choose to have a coffee, I choose to go and read, I choose to listen to something that's of value. I don't listen to the news. Yeah. I have zero interest in politics. Things that are just constantly negative, it's just absolute rubbish. Yeah. 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 So, but these are choices you have to make and you need to understand. It's what you expose yourself to. Right? Yeah. yeah. And it's what you practice. If you practice complaining, then you will be an expert in complaining. If you practice resilience, then you'll be an expert. Sure. Same thing. If you, so you go down and you practice going up, down and up, down and up, and it's tough, it's tough. But the more it happens, the stronger you are. 100%. And your, th your skin just gets thicker and thicker that nothing can hurt you. Mm. And this is, I, and, you visualize the power of visualization yes. is insane. It can take you places. I How do you practice? I I visual. I just see myself. I saw myself on the top of Everest. I saw myself. I did. I could not see myself on top of Aconcagua. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see it. But I said, no, no, no. There's something wrong. <laughs> so go something wrong here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I mean, the power of visualization is like manifesting something. You you visualize which creates the belief and then once the belief is there in the manifestation like you know you know it deep inside you if you know it then you're getting it mm. because how do we function as humans we have thoughts and we have feelings that you cannot see mm. and then we have actions and then we have the impact that you can see. Mm. So what I can see and you can see is my actions and impact. Mm. But you don't know how I feel. Mm. You don't know what I'm thinking. Behind my feelings and thinking, this is the internal world. Yes. We have our uh, values and our beliefs. Mm. And our values and beliefs are determined by what we expose ourselves to. Mm. And what we choose to. Mm. And how we, who we want to be. And then you have a set of values which create the beliefs and then it becomes an action and a reaction. So if your values and beliefs, like myself, was to climb Everest, I believe that I'm climbing it. My values was I want to become a climber and I need to do train one, two, three. Those are my values. I need to train. I need to be fit. I need to be. I value, I value these things. I have a list of values. And then it shaped my belief of climbing Everest. Now I believe I want to climb Everest and I believe I will climb it. 
My Cause you, thoughts... Because you, you can't climb Everest with the belief that you can't climb it. Of course it. not. Like, it's just of not going to happen. You will have doubts. Yeah. You're a human. You will have some doubts. Yeah. But deep inside, you know it. You know it. If you're going to climb it, you know it. But then these values and beliefs start creating the thoughts. You're just attracting... You're thinking about climbing all the time. I'm thinking, I see Everest. It's like, you know when you want to buy a new car and you decide I want to buy whatever, uh, nah, name a car. Are you going to sponsor it? <laughs> Good one. So I say you want to buy uh, like... Uh, no, like say a Tesla. A Tesla, a right. nice one. Okay. Now you start seeing Teslas all the way right. on all on the roads. Oh my God, what happened? Everybody's buying wired. a Tesla. But what that happened? Way. The thought is you start thinking about it. It's not suddenly happening. It's sure. not magic. It's because you're attracting it by your thoughts. You're thinking about it. Now you're aware. Yes. You created an awareness. And your brain is filtering everything else to just it's see the Teslas. It. Exactly. So I was filtering, climbing, 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 whether Instagram, whether books, whether everything. And then this created the feeling, the feeling mm. of excitement, the feeling of wanting, the feeling of I'll do whatever it takes. And this internal world made my actions, which was you'll see me running every day and doing interval trainings and my the people around me change. What I'm attracting is completely different because this is my internal world and I'm in the external world, it's reflecting it. Mm. And then my impact was climbed Everest and I still believe in humanity and giving back and I'm, I'm, I'm everything I'm doing is around it. And it didn't just happen. It's how I changed my perception and what I want, and it's all inside us. You need to fix yourself. The world owes you nothing. Mm. You this owe yourself. Mm. You are responsible for your actions and impact. How I treat you and how you treat me is based on our internal world. Mm. This is my values and belief. My thoughts and feelings have been shaped. Boom, actions and impact are based on the internal world. Mm. And that's a process right there. Did you have to change your circle of friends because you mentioned it? Oh yeah, so many or times. Cir I circle never had a best friend for more than a year, but like now I have one. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yes, because I was changing all the time. My sport was changing. My thoughts was changing. My feelings are different. What I wanted was changing. And, and it doesn't it make those, resonate. No. it doesn't reflect on others. It's just, it's not your space. Yeah, it's right? not exactly. And I take off. I, I appreciate people. I think people, Friends, relationships are very important for us mm. as humans. But like when I say relationships, I mean with family, friends, partners, whatever it is. But sometimes they do not, they're not made to last forever. Mm. For as much as they can last. Mm. For as much as they can serve. Mm. And people are coming in your life for a reason. You Absolutely. attracted those, those people. You wouldn't have had me on, on your show if I didn't have Everest on my list and other mountains. Because I'm not, not that I'm not inspiring, but I do not resonate with your content. Mm. So how will we attract each other as humans, right? Mm. So it's, it's, you attract the people you want to be. Around. And my old friends, I love them and I respect them, but we cannot go out in the same ending anymore because it doesn't resonate with what I do anymore. And they do not find it interesting as well. So it's okay. Mm. It's completely fine. So the, the circle of people you surround yourself with as well is very important. And I honestly always suggest, it's just a suggestion. I limit my people to, f I would take advice from three people, maximum five, but I wouldn't take it more than three. And the three who can somehow reflect something in me because they cannot completely reflect me, but they reflect something in me and I know they would give me the right advice or they will just open my eyes to something that I'm not aware of. I cannot see. And this depends on what it is you're, looking, yes. you're asking in terms of advice. Yeah. I mean, so as much as I love my mom, yeah. if I was to ever climb a mountain. I would not ask her. Of course it not. It would not happen, mom. <laughs> exactly. Don't worry, mom. <laughs> If you know me, you know, climbing is not going to happen. I'm going to take your son climbing most probably. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Many have tried. Many have even said they will pay for it. It's not going to happen. Maybe I climbed the mountain twice like he did with his girlfriend. He made her jump twice. <laughs> you go, darling. Love you long time. I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> I forgot. The circle of friends and the people you take advice from. Oh, yes. So I guess it depends on the individuals, right? So I mean, let's say, for example, if you've got plumbing issues, yeah, it doesn't matter if your uncle or your dad is a dentist 
or your best friend is a dentist, as great as they are, it doesn't matter how much you respect them, you have a plumbing issue. Yeah, exactly. You know? And we live in a world where people are just throwing advice. You have to be quite selective with who you get advice on what. Mm -hmm. Or if I need help with digital marketing, there will be great individuals, CEOs of huge companies, multi-billion dollar companies. They're great as CEOs for multi-billion dollar companies in that sector. When I need help cut through the noise in the digital space, I need to go to that expert. What quote from reading, watching videos, or listening to podcasts, or maybe you've seen it somewhere on the wall, mm. is there a quote that really resonates with you at this stage of your life? Yeah, be the change you want to be. Nice one. Was that Mahatma Gandhi? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yes, it is. Very be nice. the change. That's powerful, yeah. yeah. And an eye for an eye leaves the world blind. Mm. That's a good one too. Yeah. What's been a rubbish piece of advice you've received? Because we live in a world, like I mentioned earlier, with the dentist and the plumber mm. as an example, where people just feel that they can, even unasked, they give mm. you their opinions. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. It's terrible, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I can't I really, fake it. I, I'm I trying. I really dislike but... that advice. I really fake dislike it till it. you make it. That one. And um, there's another one. It's like, can you please act like you climbed Everest? I'm like, what do you mean? Can you act like a celebrity or something? You're never going to get sponsored like that. You need to... Can you be a little bit more Lebanese? <laughs> like, show up. <laughs> no disrespect to anyone, to all the Lebanese people. But like, can you can, can you put yourself out there? Do something about it. Like, you look like you didn't do any mountain. If I, I, I did have this once in a meeting, in a sponsorship meeting. They're wow. like, if we did not research you, you sitting here, you do not look like you climb, or you do not look like you've achieved anything. Thank God for your media. Otherwise, we, we wouldn't believe you. I'm like, what do you want me to say? I refuse to get sponsored like that. I refuse to change my whatever I post. Some people ask me to change what I post on social media because it will not attract the... Oh, no, I don't want followers. Mm. I don't care. If I'm going to grow in the wrong way that does not resonate with my mm. values, then I choose not to. And I'm happy contributing to small communities, people around me, making changes until it goes big. It's nice to make a big change. Sure. It's my dream. But I refuse to do it in the wrong way. I really appreciate that um, you're refreshingly honest and, and you're just, you're just you're in touch with yourself and you're being who you are and that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. I think it's important because many live their lives and it takes them a longer time. You're still pretty young, but it takes them a much longer time to realize that this is the end game. Mm. Like be authentic with yourself. Don't be apologetic. You know? Exactly. Your way might not work for a lot of people, but all that matters is you find your tribe and you work with whoever clicks with. And 100%, it's fine, yeah, exactly. and your voice will just be for a certain segment of people. Like I'm really aware, the man inspiring millions, excellent. But still my voice works with a certain kind of people. Exactly. I could annoy a certain person because I remind them of a cousin they dislike. I have no chance. Hmm. I'm okay with it. Exactly. Yeah. You're not, you cannot satisfy all humanity. No. People will come and criticize you and this is self-growth as well. You cannot satisfy everyone. Mm. You're made for a specific uh, audience that you can help. Yeah. And if you can help, then it's amazing. And as the most long important as you're one is you. Your first audience is yourself. Exactly. Yeah. In a world that's distracted by countless things and ways and what have you, um, if you had the world's attention for 60 seconds, Mm. What would be your advice? Life is too short, so do not focus on problems. Try to expose yourself and travel as much as you can and focus on what you love. And the most important thing in your lifetime is your soul. Your soul needs to be happy and where it truly belongs, whether it's an office or outdoors or whatever it is, follow your instinct and believe in what you want because you will get it if you work hard for it so definitely hard work and be authentic and focus on the real you get out the real you you do not have to adjust or take validation from anyone for who you are just be you that's lovely what a lovely individual what a bubbly individual what an honest what you see what you get kind of um guest you are. I appreciate you making the time. Thank you. Uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and I, was, I was telling your brother, you made me like say things I've never said that explains a lot about your vibes Thank and you. how comfortable you make your like 
your people feel. Thank and you. I'm, like I was very comfortable. It was very natural. It's very. It's so authentic and real. Thank and, you. Uh, uncensored. Yeah. It's it's beautiful. Got to walk the walk, right? Exactly. Yeah, we talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got a lot out of this. Please watch this video a second time, or if you're listening to this on the podcast, make sure you're listening to this a second time. I guarantee you'll get gems. As usual, I'm going to go over this myself a second time because I write the summary notes, which we make available on the website, kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash podcast. Did I get that right? Podcast? Yeah. Cool. That's where we're going to put it. Uh, if you have questions... <laughs> If you have questions, please ask them below. I'll try and answer them. Maybe Tima can join in and answer some of your questions. If there were thoughts that we had shared and you want to continue the conversation, please do so as well. Uh, I'll be happy to read them. Again, you can contribute if you like as well. Great. Motivate some some individuals who, who might ask questions Definitely. and require the motivation. Definitely. Our show has got nothing to do with showing off. What we hope to do with every guest, as I'm sure we've done, with Tima here is um, we want to help you get inspired, get informed and get going. Whether you are a mountaineer, whether you're looking to potentially become a mountaineer and climb a mountain, or you're just wanting to conquer anything in your life. I was going to say conquer, not conquer. <laughs> conquer any, any mountain, or, you know, climb any mountain <laughs> or achieve anything you want in your life. Um, someone like you really shows that it is possible if you set your mind to it. So thank you for that. Thank you. If the audience would like to follow you, mm. uh, what's the best way so for them to follow So I'm very active you? on uh, Instagram, yeah. uh, Matt and Gypsy. Gypsy is G-I-P-S-Y. No worries. And the team Durian on Facebook. Cool. We'll place all the links in the show notes. Remember to be kind, be ambitious, be grateful. I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. This is How Do They Do It. Mm. How's the public speaking thing going for you? <laughs> My word, if it's, I have a talk in a school, and I love school stuff because okay. it's me giving back. I Lovely. don't charge, but I don't know how to charge. I don't. This should actually be, put this on the mic. This advice is important. I'm tired of giving I mean, it that's how one I, at a time. That's how I got to you through like looking, okay, the best motivational speaker in okay. the Middle East, and then I get Kevin Abdurrahman. And they go, yeah. You reached out to me. Yes. Right, the first time you reached out to me, and then our conversation uh, developed until we ha- we're here today. But you reached out to me, asking and if it's okay with you i'll share it of course that you asked for help when it comes to public speaking yeah. because you're looking at being a motivational speaker so you've already done a lot of talks yes but you're you're smart enough to realize you need to develop your skills to get there uh, okay so i do a lot for like the youth so schools and stuff and i think this is the giving back part of it but then when it comes to companies organizations people who actually have the budget for these things I find it difficult to price me. I find it difficult to put my, like, okay, do I focus on my slides? Do I focus on my talk? Do I focus on the audience? What do I focus on? And how to put myself out there? I have a lot to share. Mm -hmm. Like, we shared so much already. But I would start talking and, like, start going into the la la la. There's so much to share in one session. And it's, it's tough setting yourself as a motivational speaker in the Middle East. I feel sometimes it's not taking that serious, you know? There's um, plenty of business. There's quite a few people doing it. So there are many aspects when it comes to motivational speaking. You've got to treat it as a business. Mm. And so there are different elements. Okay. One of the elements is being seen, yeah. which you're doing quite a bit of that. But then it's getting the bookings. Yeah. So you get inquiries. Yeah. And people throw different prices at you? No, I get inquiries and people expect me to do it for free all the time. Okay. And I remember at some point you said that they've had other speakers where they've paid. Exactly. Okay. And I felt discriminated as a woman because I feel like... Because you're a woman. Yeah. yeah. I'm, okay. like, I'm like, is it because I'm a woman? Because it was about woman empowerment. And then you said that you paid this person... Uh, this amount, X amount. To a male yeah. and speaker? Then, and then, yes. Okay. And then you don't, you don't, do you, are you undervaluing my experience? Or do you think I'm not a good public speaker? Or what is it exactly? Is it, do I look too young to get paid for this? Sure. I'm trying to figure out what is it that is, I cannot change this to a proper business and inspire others through the motivation of speaking. Cool. I appreciate the fact that you're okay. Um, with sharing this so we can record it because I'm kind of tired of giving that advice to individuals who are coming to me on a regular basis and also reaching out via Instagram. This applies to, I think, just about anything. Um, First and foremost, when it comes to booking, Mm -hmm. you need to have the experience, right? You want to do motivational speaking, as an example, for anyone that wants to do motivational speaking, learn to speak, right? You have confidence. Mm. 
If you don't have the confidence, develop your confidence by speaking. But when you have the confidence, you need to understand that it's not just rah, 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 rah. You need to be able to craft your message. That requires skills. Mm. My advice to you was what? Find someone that inspires you. I remember. Right? Yes. Hire them if they're selling the service mm -hmm. of, you know, public speaking coaching. Hire them. Or if you can't do that for whatever reason, whether it's geography or whether it's funding, the next best thing would be if you admire them and the way they are and the level of speaking and you can go, hey, this is the kind of way I'd like to speak. Yeah. Right? You get their course. Okay. Right? Because you need to develop your skill. Yeah. There's no shortcuts around this. And once you develop your skill and you learn, you have to practice. Now, in order to be able to practice and become good, it's kind of like even dancing. I've said the same thing about dancing because it applies to anything. Mm. People say fake it till you make it. No, you can't. There are a certain number of hours that you need to put in, yeah. in the thousands of hours, that then you have this fluidity about you, where subconsciously it's like people who work with art. It takes them years for them to then be able to walk into a room and go, that's fake. I don't know what it is, and I can't explain it to you, but that's not a real painting. Yeah, I get, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But that comes from thousands, tens of thousands of hours of experience. When it comes to motivational speaking, it's no different. Those who are truly having an impact, you notice they speak simply, but they speak well. Sometimes they get you, actually most times, you don't even know how they got you. Mm. I know it because I can break it down and I can tell you, or someone who's a who's an expert when it comes to media or communication, will break it down and go, they're using these techniques to be able to get through. Yeah. But in any case, you find them, you emulate, you do. When it comes to doing, it's taken me close to 20 years to be a successful motivational speaker. We started with this off camera. It doesn't mean that will be the timeline for you to be successful. I've seen people be immensely successful, more successful than me in 12 months. But you have to be willing to let go of time. You have to be willing to sacrifice and go, I'm willing to do this mm. and time is irrelevant. If this is my Everest, I'm willing to go as many times as I need to until I hit the peak, whether it's 12 months or in my case was 20 years wow. yeah. to be able to not go hungry and be able to actually have a life out of it yeah. and make it. Yeah. Pricing. Until I'm tired of also seeing this because I've had many people approach me and they go, Hey, my pricing is ten or fifteen thousand dollars to speak. Okay, this person wanted to book me, and I said no because I'm at fifteen thousand. What did they offer you? Two and a half. Why didn't you take it? Because I'm at fifteen thousand. Who said you're at fifteen thousand mm. dollars? Are you busy every day? No. When was the last time you spoke? Three months ago. Why would you not take the two and a half thousand dollars? The only time you're in a place to up your price. The only time you're in a place. To be able to command a certain figure is if you have the luxury of saying no. I get you. Right? Yeah. So if you've got four events every day, back to back, for the next three years, then you can go, hey, buddy, I can't do two and a half. I'm at five. Yeah. Hey, buddy, again, if it's the same thing, mm. hey, buddy, I can't do five. I'm at 10. Hey, buddy, I can't do 10. I'm at 100. Because there are individuals who get 100, 200,000, 300,000, $500,000 per event. Yeah but they have the luxury of being able to say no. This applies not only to motivational speaking, it applies to whether you're selling your, your work as a graphic designer, as, um, I don't know, any aspect, you know, website developer, anything where I've, I hear people saying, oh, but you know, I'm worth this much. You're not worth anything unless you can back it up, unless you're busy every day. Yeah. That's the only time you can start filtering through. So my advice is always, if you can, sure, give them your rate, but what, you do whatever you have to do to get to where you want to. Which means if it means you do free stuff, don't take it personally, mm. put your ego aside. Think about that, hey, this is an opportunity to fine tune my craft. Yeah. I wanna do speaking for the sake of speaking. I wanna do speaking because it makes me feel good. I wanna do speaking because it's my way of giving back. And then I wanna do speaking because it's going to be a way where I'm gonna earn a living out of it but I'm willing to also play this game however long it takes. I'm so happy this is recorded. I'm going to use this. Okay. <laughs> I should charge you for this. I should charge you for this. I'm just tired. Of, I've said this no, thousands it's, it's, of times. I'm happy you mentioned this. It's, it's I'm glad you've been no. open and I'm going to, so that's why I'm sharing this. Super. Right? And then you just do it. And if yeah. it means, does it mean if, and this is something I would advise myself because I've, I made these mistakes, these mistakes I made, and I could have gone a lot faster 
had I actually accepted this and did it right at the beginning. Mm. So I was in denial for many years. I didn't play this game. I'm at five grand, I'm at 50 grand. No, you're at nothing until you're fully booked four times a day, yeah. three years in advance, and then you start filtering going and using price as a way to filter through the kind of talks you'd like to give. That's a right? very nice giveaway. Yeah. No, thank you. No, so, I mean, yeah, go yeah. out there, do as many talks as you need to, put on a price, and soon enough, when, you, when you're delivering your message well and you're sharing your story, which is amazing, just craft it, deliver it with power. If you just put value out there, it's only a matter of time where it all comes back. Do you have an advice on crafting a story? Um, find a few speakers or a speaker that okay. you like. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Find out if they're coaching yeah. or they can coach you and get them to help you out yeah. or a course that they might have. Mm -hmm. uh, go through it and then you will see the techniques. You go through the, the steps and then you go, okay, this is my story. I have this talk. Yeah. I need to deliver it. Okay. This is the audience. This is the message. How do I craft it? And then every time you deliver it, you will realize within your own story, how can I say it better? I I've been de delivering 20 years doing stories. I look at some of the stories I delivered even last year and I'm like, I can do it better. Every time I get off stage, I'm like, I can do this better. Next time I'm going to try it this way. The same applies with stand-up comedians. I've got a lot of friends who are stand-up comedians. Mm. They, they're constantly crafting their skill. The first time they have a thought, sometimes they'll say the thought and they go, oh, I thought it was funnier in my head. Right. Yeah. And then when it came out, not so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'll, they'll land it and be like, okay, some people got it, some people didn't. Maybe I need to adjust mm. the punchline. Mm. Maybe I need to do the setting correctly. Maybe the context needs to be changed. And that's the fine tuning that comes from just the fact that you're going, I'm doing this because I want to. Yeah. Right? I get it. And then the, the, the coaching and the, the skill learning, it's just things that help you craft it. 100%. Thank Good you. Good luck with it. My Thank absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, to a future great motivational speaker <laughs> whom you should be paying anyway right yeah. now. This was just <laughs> advice in terms of long term because she's got an amazing story and if you've watched this or you've listened to this, you should know this by now. <laughs> Bless. Thank you so All much. All right.